Okay, um, member stats, us back in the open, back in open business. Um, and I'm going to move on now to item 11, which is the notices of motion. And the first notice of motion in front of us today is, is a motion, the motion in the name of, of Councillor John Boyle. Councillor Boyle. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, it's been a while waiting tonight to, to, to bring this uh, matter. In fact, actually, I've been waiting. Councillor Boyle, just before you, you, you start, um, have we got a second there for your motion? Second, Deputy Mayor. Second, Alderman Devaney. Okay, uh, I got Alderman Devaney there. Um, okay. So go ahead, Councillor Boyle. Thanks, thanks again, uh, Deputy Mayor, and thanks to uh, Alderman Vivenny as well for coming on to, to second uh, the motion. I don't doubt that there will be very many. In fact, actually, there will be a lot of people on, on, on this council who, who would uh, have wanted to step forward and, and present this motion, never mind just second it. And indeed, uh, Deputy Mayor, I've been waiting a couple of months to put this forward because I had initially um, wanted to put it through on, on, on the Mayor's business in July, but the Mayor had suggested perhaps it would be more appropriate to bring it forward as a full motion to Council. And in actual fact, I'm thankful to him for, for suggesting that because I think that was that was the right approach. And Mayor, um, I think that the, the motion in itself, if we can take it as read, and I should have said that, it really says everything that that needs to be said uh, as currently as the issue currently stands in relation to the OMA bomb. Mr. Justice Horner's conclusions uh, come after an eight year process, which began with Michael Gallagher, who will be known to everyone in this room, uh, who challenged the Secretary of State's refusal to hold a public inquiry and the events that, of course, are very well known to us all here. Uh, the callous and merciless murder of very many innocent people, 29 in total, including a mother. Um, uh, with two unborn children uh, who were simply just going about their everyday business, as we all do, uh, and certainly not expecting anything of, of that magnitude to hit them and hit their families. Um, put in very simple terms, Deputy Mayor, Justice Horner has declared uh, there would be a great advantage in conducting a, a European Court of Human Rights Article 2 compliant investigation simultaneously on both sides of uh, the border and the SDLP support that assertion. Uh, of course, we also await Justice Horner's full judgment because that hasn't been given yet. However, it is plain to see that full transparency and investigation of the Oma atrocity is the very least that the victims and their families uh, might expect at this time after so many years. I very much doubt uh, that any of us will ever forget where we were on that particular day and what we were doing and that day in August 1998, I certainly will never forget it. Uh, and when asked, I always remember it. Um, but what we can be absolutely certain of is that the people of Oma will never forget it. The parents of the children who lost their lives will never forget it. Children from Spain and Bonkrana and children from a, from our own uh, city and district area. And of course, uh, the, the wider uh, Oma area. Those people will never forget either. And it's my belief that it's incumbent on all of us here tonight that we ensure that both the British and Irish governments, they never forget and that they stick to their commitments, which were given at the time. And we all remember what was said, that they would leave no stone unturned. But all these years later, all these years on from 1998, it does appear to be the case that there are many stones that have still been unturned and this is what the victims and the families of those victims deserve all of those stones must be absolutely have to be overturned and looked under uh, and the only way that, that can be done Answer, boy. on public inquiry i'm nearly finished Deputy Mayor, if you don't mind so i'm simply asking you all here today to support this call on behalf of the victims of the oma bomb and their families to write to both the governments mentioned in uh, the notice of motion, asking them to progress without further delay to full open public inquiries. That's the least these people deserve. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor Boyd. Um, Councillor Rory McHugh. 
Yeah, uh, Gordon Mavitt's here and uh, wants to acknowledge as well Councillor Boyle and, and bringing forward this motion. Just on, on behalf of my own party, Sean Fein, um, we also welcome the recommendation from the High Court that the British government holds a human rights complaint, a full investigation into the Omar bombing. Um, this recommendation is a tribute to the determination and indeed the courage of the families killed and injured and their long campaign for truth and justice. No doubt the fact that the judge said in his, in his comments that there was a real prospect that this tragedy could well have been prevented will have added to the, the distress of the families and leave them with further unanswered questions. That's why it's paramount the British government act on this recommendation and moves immediately to announce a full human rights complaint inquiry into the exact circumstances of what happened. We also have no issue, Chair, with uh, supporting a similar course of action from the government on its expertise. In conclusion, Chair, the family shouldn't have to face any further delays or face any more obstacles when it, when it comes to finding out the truth of what happened to their loved ones on that terrible day. Or am I good, Chair? Thank you, Councillor McHugh. Um, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Boyle for bringing the motion. Uh, this issue uh, touches on me very closely. Uh, a lot of you know me as a Castle Derrick person, but I was uh, brought up in Oma. My family still live in Oma. And when I was in Florida on holiday watching the pictures, I witnessed my brother walking across the screen. Uh, I witnessed my uncle uh, coming from the dust. And you can imagine being so far away uh, from the situation and wondering what the hell has happened here. Um, an inquiry has to be undertaken. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt. And I welcome the recommendation uh, with all my heart. Uh, it was my first year in the assembly. Of course, 98 was the start of the assembly. And uh, it was my maiden speech, uh, unfortunately, uh, on the assembly floor. Uh, those who who were killed and injured, uh, quite a few of them known to me personally as folk that I would known from schools or family know. Absolutely horrendous. Uh, I remember I was flown home by the British Embassy. Uh, and driving down the road, I got to the Balagoli roundabout. And to be quite honest with you, all I wanted to do was turn and go away again. But uh, into into that maelstrom uh, that, that was Oma at that time, and, uh, the, the just funeral after funeral after funeral. Let's not forget uh, that an employee of Strabane District Council, Brian White, horticulturalist, died in that bomb with his uh, father and, and there is a small plaque to Brian whom I knew very well uh, at the front of the council offices. Uh, I pay, do like others pay praise to Michael Geller, Stanley McComb, uh, Mrs White, uh, Kevin Skelton, many many who have never given up on this uh, and welcome what's coming forward but I'll conclude <laughs> obviously we'll be supporting the motion uh, but I will conclude with reminding folk, yes, there is an investigation into what may have gone wrong with authorities, etc. But let us never forget who actually made this bomb, who transported this bomb, who planted this bomb, who deliberately misled people into a wrong place and who detonated such a devastating bomb in the middle of my hometown. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Hussey. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, um, Deputy Mayor, um, for allowing me in. Um, first of all, uh, we, uh, our party, have no problem in supporting this um, notice of motion coming forward here. Uh, and I think it's very timely. And I thank Councillor Boyle for bringing it across. And our party is on the record that all innocent victims um, should just should have justice uh, and truth. Um, as we look at the events unfolded on the 15th of August, 1998, we will all remember where we were when the news started to filter through the radio stations of the atrocity that was unfolding uh, in Oma. 
and you know the 29 people that were murdered there and very clearly uh, murdered by a bomb that was transported from the Republic to Oma. Um, the, the organization behind it was a distant Republican organization, the real IRA. And I always think that, uh, you know, the people of Oma on that day when they got up that morning, um, early in the morning to do their business or shopping and chores, many of them went out to do their shopping, as I say, never expecting that the, some of them would be coming, would be murdered on, on that day. And, you know, as I say, um, the, both governments have a duty of care here um, to have an inquiry into this. And I have met Michael Gallagher and I know Stanley McComb very well uh, and others um, who have dedicated nearly their lives to, to fighting here for justice uh, and truth. And as I say, once again, it was a callous, uh, uh, they, they were very much callous and barbaric murders on the day. Deputy Mayor, we have no problem in supporting the, the notice of motion. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Um, Councillor Sinai Barr, do you wish to speak on this motion? No, Chair. Okay, okay. Um, Councillor Hargan. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, yeah, as others have said, I mean, Neoma Bowman was a tragedy beyond belief. Um, I still remember the shock today and felt it going right through my own system. So what happened to people in Oma is unimaginable in terms of like the shock and the pain um, uh, of the tragedy. Uh, this is an atrocity that should never have happened. Um, and, you know, like others did, we condemned it at the time. Um, <clears throat> and it still haunts our society and I think uh, you know, the vast majority of people across Ireland were, you know, repulsed by what happened, shocked by what happened, and outraged by what happened. Um, and the families and the victims uh, of the Oma bombing deserve the truth and they deserve the justice, uh, just like uh, the many others who uh, have suffered unimaginably over the period of, that we call the Troubles. Um, and I suppose, you know, the fact that this could have been stopped uh, makes it all the more, uh, uh, you know, outrageous and angering. Um, that won't bring any relief right now to the, the, the people who lost family members and friends and who've had the campaign on uh, for the truth and justice over the last, uh, you know, over decades. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a reminder, uh, I suppose, of what we don't want to go back to. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, our thoughts uh, go out to the people of Oma uh, who have suffered as a result of this tragedy and, and we support their efforts to, uh, you know, find the truth um, and, uh, uh, you know, get justice uh, and no stone should be left unturned uh, in, in the pursuit of justice. Um, but it's also very frustrating, uh, you know, to know that uh, elements of the state could have stopped this tragedy from developing. So we'll be supporting this motion and we hope that, um, you know, that uh, that brings encouragement uh, to the campaigners who have been relentless on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hargan. Um, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair. And like all our speakers, I'm happy to support this motion. I think that this has, this case has far outreached the threshold for a public inquiry and for a breach of the human rights of the people who suffered this act. And uh, looking at the motion, I would say there's a very important thing in it and where it says inter ally. And they should say in that what it means. Those who were complicit in this and when we talk about the police and Irish governments, how far up those that were complicit in this reach in those governments and those states. And I think they'll not be too eager to come forward with a full public inquiry because it will uncover their complicity in this. But I wish the people well who are pursuing this case. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Paul, um, Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Chair. 
Uh, I think most most sentiments have been said, but we fully support this motion and uh, believe both governments need to act on this recommendation and the families need to know the truth. I will support the motion. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there's no further speakers, I'm going to invite Councillor Boyle to sum up. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, and thank you to all those uh, who contributed tonight, and, and no doubt many others uh, could have um, contributed their own uh, recollections from, from that particular uh, day, and indeed very many other days, as, as others have said, uh, right throughout um, uh, the conflict or the troubles, uh, as, as we've come to know it. Um, uh, however, this is a very specific um, ask of this council. It is obviously in relation to um, that book, which was um, visited upon the people of uh, Oma. And can I just pay particular um, thanks to uh, Alderman Hussey for, for his recollections, um, because I did say at the very beginning of my address that we'd all remember where we were. Um, and Alderman Hussey uh, has just outlined exactly where he was, and he was halfway around the world away. Um, from a place that was very dear to him and from people that were very dear to him. Uh, and I thank him for that particular contribution. And actually, you know, I, 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 when when we reflect upon that, you can actually see, you can, just bearing in mind that the sheer velocity and, and, and the, the magnitude of the pain that this particular event visited upon the people of Oma, but not simply just the people of Oma, but people um, uh, across these shores and indeed uh, and on the continent of Europe as well. So again, I commend the um, the motion to uh, all here today, and I, I sincerely hope everybody can support it. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Okay. Um, just before I take this to a vote, um, give, based on, on on a lot of the all the contributions they did, um, gives gives an indication that this would be unanimous. Is there anybody? Who is not in support of the motion that's in front of us? In the in the interest of expediency, I'm going to take that motion as unanimous, members. So the motion has passed in the name of Councillor John Boy. Um, our next notice of motion is in the name of Councillor Emmett Doyle. Councillor Doyle, have you got a second there for your motion? I was just going to ask for that, uh, Deputy Chair. Thank you. Councillor Harkin has seconded your motion, so um, going ahead, Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I'd first like to declare an interest as a member of the board of the uh, Karen Hall Resource Centre. Uh, members, we're all aware of the hardships our people face at present. COVID. The winding down of the furlough scheme this week, as well as the pre-COVID poverty in this city and district. Surely the last thing our people need is their hardship compounded by inaccessible benefits and feet dragging by political parties who should be helping them. I have said many times before in this virtual chamber, and it's well documented in the general consciousness, that for political reasons, we were told welfare reform would never impact people here. The benefit cap, the bedroom tax, and the two-child tax credit cap were to be a myth. Not only not a myth, Deputy Mayor, we were then told that they would become a reality here, but that the parties would ensure there'd be mitigations in place so no one would feel their effects. We now know this simply to be a lie on top of another lie. Two organisations, the Right to Work and PPR, recently undertook a survey of advice workers in relation to benefit system um, that they help provide uh, people's uh, help every day with navigating the system. The report was an assessment of uh, the support being provided, the claimants by DFC and those companies contracted by the department. And I have to say, I was shocked at reading it. The responses demonstrate clear contraventions of human rights law and compounded the obvious failures of the review uh, of PUP carried out by NIPSO. The report lists a litany of failures, denials and confusion within the department in their communication with the two organizations in relation to commitments made for a human rights checklist. I trust members have read the report, but I felt it important to pick out some of the more shocking aspects revealed by those uh, who work on the front line. Advisors outlined instances of cases uh, of the department refusing mandatory reconsiderations 
before claimants had even had a chance to prevent, uh, present medical evidence, effectively locking those in need out of the supports they're entitled to. Advisors, advisors reported that in the majority of their caseloads, applicants had no idea the criteria that they must qualify for benefits, especially those on universal credit. Our people are being asked to shoot in the dark in a game of chance. One revelation in the report rendered me speechless, and it should send shockwaves across his chamber tonight. Overall, in 75% of cases, the advice worker anticipated a denial of the minimum essential level of benefits. The minimum essential level to love. What is going on? I want to turn, uh, Deputy Mayor, for me, uh, to the second part of my motion outline and the situation that executive parties in this uh, council cannot run away from. It's yet another failure to deliver and has helped create the perfect storm outlined by the report. In March 2020, in fairness to her, the Sinn Féin Communities Minister outlined that new legislation would be needed to continue the mitigations to the bedroom tax and benefit cap. In September 2020, the then Minister Carol McEwen reported to the Assembly that draft legislation to close the polls was ready to go to the executive. The mitigations referred to covered those in receipt of a relevant benefit in 2016, meaning anyone applying for benefits after this, given all we've been told, would be subject to the benefit cap, and those subject those living in social housing would be subject to the bedroom tax if they moved to a new property. So the device, can you bring your mic to close? Yeah, I just want to quote if I can um, the yeah. communities minister, current minister, um, and this is a quote from herself. I wrote to executive colleagues on the 24th of January 2020 with a proposal to introduce primary legislation to extend the social care size criteria welfare mitigation scheme beyond 31st March 2020. This was followed by a further paper that was issued on the 26th of February. I wrote again to colleagues on the 15th of March. The paper was updated, reissued to the executive on the 22nd of March and was seeking agreement to the introduction of a draft bill to extend social sector uh, size criteria. 11 times Councilor Doyle wrote to her colleagues, someone is stopping this legislation going forward to help our people and the parties in this council deserve uh, to be able to tell our people exactly what is going on with this programme. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor Doyle. Um, Councilor Heaney. Uh, thank you, Chair, um, and we'll be happy to support this motion, but just as it was being acknowledged there by Councillor Doyle at the close of any of his remarks, Minister of Communities, Deirdre Hargey, is fully committed to extending these mitigations and closing any necessary loopholes. Uh, the required le legislation and regulation are drafted and ready to go. The necessary budget for this has been allocated. Uh, Deirdre Hargey has made repeated attempts, as Councillor Doyle has said, to put this on the executive agenda, and it must have executive approval to progress. The blockage of this is totally unacceptable. She has now called for a special meeting of the executive uh, on this issue, and she has called for Minister Swan, Long and Malandy back on this. So if Councillor Doyle's motion is asking the question as who's blocking this, then it needs to be directed to the DUP. Because that's where the problem lies. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Henney. Um, Councillor Harkin. Yeah, people for profit welcome uh, this motion by Councillor Doyle. Um, as we said before, uh, we can't have too few discussions in our council about deprivation and the challenges so many of our constituents face. And the reality is uh, our government and our council just isn't doing enough to help people um, because our deprivation figures are uh, on changing and in fact, they're getting worse. Mm -hmm. So when this report came out uh, from, from people at the coal face, I think we should all um, pay attention and uh, as has been said, a lot of the content of the document is alarming, um, but I think it only really validates what a lot of us already know, uh, that uh, people who are trying to access help uh, and who deserve help have obstacles put in their way. Uh, and this is not uh, accidental, this is intentional um, because there's been a clear ideological drive to push people 
um, off benefits, to try and deny people benefits, and to basically scapegoat people who um, try to access benefits um, in order to break up our uh, welfare network. And unfortunately, this is the state of our welfare benefit system that the uh, Stormont executive oversees on a day-to-day -day way, uh, in, a, in a day to day way. Um, and, and our council, as people know, has backed the uh, right to work demand uh, on numerous occasions now uh, for the people's proposal, uh, which includes uh, calling on the minister to implement a human rights checklist. And I really don't understand why that can't be done. Uh, the minister, when she was mayor of Belfast, said she supported it, but she refuses to implement it and um, and uh, now that she has the ability to do it. So I think we have to raise the, the call again from our council to back the call for uh, the human rights checklist. Um, look, all of these policies that have been brought in uh, that have done so much damage to people across our district and across the north should be scrapped and pushed back. The bedroom tax that was supposed to be never here. Um, the two child policy. Close. Uh, and, and I'll finish up. Um, so uh, we'll be supporting this and we uh, hope that this is uh, puts additional pressure on the department for people to have better treatment and for a human rights checklist to be brought in immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hargan. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, um, Deputy Mayor, for uh, allowing us in. Uh, look, um, our party have no problem uh, in supporting the, the, the notice of motion coming forward here. Uh, I think we're all fairly aware of the issues uh, and the difficulties in around universal credit and the whole that the whole environment. And you know, for for myself, who sits on the uh, advice board here, uh, advice NI, um, I can really see the difficulties that that are unfolding and is only going to get worse. And I do believe um, the, the notice of motion is timely here that we reassess uh, and look at the issues and deal with them. But no problem, Chair or Deputy Mayor, in supporting the notice of motion. Thank you, Ald um, Alderman Devaney, Councillor Farrell. Uh, thanks, Deputy Mayor. Um, the SLP supports the motion. The fact of the matter is that we have parties in this chamber who voted for welfare reform and all that it entails. We have the DUP, we have Sinn Féin, and we have Alliance, who joined forces in 2015 to implement Tory welfare cuts in the North. They voted for universal credit, they voted for PIP, they voted for the bedroom tax, and they voted for the benefit cap. And no amount of spin is going to change that fact. Uh, Sinn Féin, in particular, stated categorically, without reservation, unambiguously, there will be no bedroom tax. There is a bedroom tax, and there's hundreds of households across the North paying it. They said they would protect the most vulnerable. All they've done is make more people more vulnerable. So it's high time that Sinn Féin and the DUP joined forces again in relation to welfare cuts and sorted out the bedroom tax once and for all. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there any other indicated speakers? If not, I'm going to invite um, Councillor Doyle to sum up. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. It was remiss of me uh, not to thank Councillor Harkin for, for seconding the motion, and I appreciate that, he, that he's done that. I appreciate all of the um, all the, the participation in the, in the debate, but what this comes down to is, is that there are people in our city who are now 20 quid a week worse off on universal credit. It's obvious they had to fight tooth and nail just to get universal credit. They're now being hit by potentially the bedroom tax. Their national insurance contributions uh, from their benefits will go up um, from the British government. And there is we, we can have a war of words around all of the things that we've spoken about. But one of the other, I, I just want to, again, to give um, the Minister for Communities, her place, because um, recently she answered an assembly question, I think it was to an Ulster Unionist MLA, and she said, in an effort to progress the welfare mitigation legislation, I have written on seven occasions between the 1st of April 2021 and the 10th of June 2021 
requesting that the issue be tabled for discussion at the executive. Now, I don't know who is step stepping in the way of this, um, but I would urge all members to read the sounding the alarm report and reflect on if this is being stopped, what impact it is having on the people in this city and district. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Um, and again, I'm not picking up anybody who is is indicated that they do not support the motion that's in front of us today. Um, but before a ticket is unanimous, I'm going to give that put it on the floor um, and give people the opportunity. Is there anybody who doesn't support this uh, this motion or wishes to abstain? No, I'm going to take that motion as unanimous members and move on. Um, so that motion and the name of Councillor Doyle has passed. Our next motion is in the name of Councillor Michaela Boyle. Michaela, have you got a seconder for your motion? Yeah, I'll be the second, Sandra. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Going ahead, Michaela. Yeah. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I take the motion as read. Um, Deputy Mayor, across this district council area, I'm sure you'll agree there's hardly a councillor or an individual who would not understand the value of care workers to our families and our communities. I'm sure we all know someone, be it a family member or a friend, that has needed the care and support of our care workers. As a community representative, I'm sure you will all join with me in sending our appreciation to all of our carers. We are forever indebted to carers who help to take care of our families and constituents, particularly in their final days, as if they were their own. The depth of compassion, the tender care, often in the most difficult circumstances, is what our carers across our city and district give to those that need the compassionate help in their time of need. We live in a society wherein our population is aging and illnesses such as cancer are expected to increase significantly by the year 2040. We know without a doubt that we will require carers in much larger numbers than are, that are available today. Currently, there are not enough carers in our social care system. And I myself, I'm sure like many other elected reps, have been very frustrated when efforts, efforts to help a constituent find the care they need fail simply because they are not enough workers in our social care system. The cares that we do have are overworked due to the lack of staff and working for pay and in conditions that under no circumstances reflects the value that they add to our communities every single day. What this motion is intended to do is to urge the Western Trust and the Department of Health Health to urgently and proactively produce a plan to address the need across the social care sector for today and for the future. The motion is asking the trust and the department to come to us with their social care workforce plan and to show us that the social care system that we all need has been prepared for for years to come. In summary, Deputy Mayor, our care workers are invaluable in our communities and we must treat them as such. I've also been asked by many, many families about a sitting service for their elderly parents and relatives who want their loved ones cared for at home. But family members have to work throughout the day and would like someone that they can pay to sit a few hours a day between times at carers call. Just so that they have that extra safety net until a family member can call to the home. We need more people also to be available to provide these services. I asked all councillors to support this motion. Gurmila Mayogov. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Boyle. Um, Councillor Riley. Uh, yes, thanks, Deputy Mayor. And can I start by thanking uh, Councillor Boyle for bringing forward this motion here this evening? Uh, it's obviously very topical at the moment, but uh, I, I, I do come to this motion with a, a view, I suppose, given uh, in my employment, I work for the Alzheimer's Society with a view in relation to uh, dementia. Uh, but I'm conscious that the social care system is is a lot wider than, than simply those who are living with dementia. I, I, I think that uh, Councillor Boyle has touched on 
uh, the need for uh, the Western Trust and the Health Minister to outline their plans, which is all very valid and correct, and I'm delighted to see that as part of the motion here this evening. Um, the Health Minister has indicated that uh, he's curtailed with the, what he can do because of single-year budgets, uh, and that has meant that addressing some of the problems that exist in social care uh, are there because of the fact that he can't budget for more than one year. So we look forward to, uh, to that being ironed out uh, as the Assembly progresses into a new mandate. Uh, and within this Assembly mandate, uh, I'm also conscious that there has been a reform about a social care, but that that has been very slow. It's been disrupted by the suspension of devolution. Uh, it's been disrupted by Brexit and it has obviously been disrupted by the pandemic. Uh, and we know that the system of social care here was broken before the pandemic, but the, the problems uh, that are in the system have been brought into stark focus uh, by the pandemic and, and has exposed for all to see uh, the clear gaps that are there. Uh, so I think that now, as we are hopefully exiting the pandemic, it is the right time uh, to be trying to rebuild our healthcare service. Uh, to touch on points that were raised earlier this evening in this meeting about the care workers pay, uh, we need to show those people that we value them and value the care that they provide. And one way of doing that is providing them with the correct wage for the work that they are doing, because they do look after the most vulnerable in our society. Uh, and while there not, may not be a cure for so many of the ailments that people find themselves having as they live longer and need social care, uh, we can cure the care system. Uh, and I, I would uh, draw my remarks to a close, Deputy Mayor, by saying that anyone who hasn't yet watched the Channel 4 programme that air, aired earlier this month called Help really should take uh, an hour and, and put the time into understanding uh, through that programme the, the care that is provided by people, uh, often on a very low wage, often by women in our society who had the most vulnerable, but do so uh, at great personal uh, risk and personal cost. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Um, Councillor Maeve O'Neill. Thank you, Chair. Um, and just to firstly declare um, interests as an employee of the Western Health and Social Care Trust. Um, but secondly, um, just to echo Councillor Boyle's comments and thanking all the care workers, whether it's from people's in people's homes, residential or nursing homes, or in hospital, and and thank you to Councillor Boyle for for bringing this motion forward. Um, you know, I see firsthand from from working in the hospital and working in the wards, um, trying to support discharges, the crisis, um, in the in Dami care, what what that presents in terms of the real challenges in supporting people to get home out of hospital. As it feels like it's getting more difficult to access those home care services in a in a timely manner, um, and and the work that these workers do is completely essential because it supports people to stay at home, uh, which is not only cheaper but it's what people want to do, um, and it really is an, you know it's essential work and it's such valuable work, but it is work that is you know very very uh, you know lowly paid and. You know, we have to remember that at the start of this pandemic, these were the workers who were having to fashion their own PPE, um, you know, to go into people's homes to protect themselves and also to protect, you know, the the people and the different homes that they were working with. Um, and also they were whenever people were being discharged from hospital and uh, being open to the Dami care workers again, you know, there was no and, the, you know, these people weren't tested before um, leaving hospital. Um, so. Um, in the way, in the in the strict way that they were, if they were going on to care homes, um, so you know, you know, there was a lot of risk put on these family care workers during the pandemic, um, which you know, which really didn't get enough noise or enough attention, um, and our domiciliary care services are definitely underfunded, but this crisis in domiciliary care is the direct result of privatisation in our health and social care service. If, if you look at it, most of our domiciliary care uh, providers are privatised. And they're in competition with one another for contracts from the trust. And uh, social care should not be the victim to the law of the jungle, um, the market, uh, and it should most certainly be brought back into the public service and take the profit motive out of it. Um, you know, we know how inefficient the private sector is when it comes to delivering health and social care services, and and that has been reported upon, and it's been evident with the 
cronyism and outsourcing, which has been defined the government's response to this pandemic, um, which has really been a shambles. Um, but because of the privatisation of domiciliary care, it means that those workers who are providing these essential health and social care services have terrible terms and conditions, as Councillor Boyle uh, pointed out, uh, and really poor union representation. And it's because those ter terms and conditions are so bad that this leads to the workforce that is constantly changing as workers are moving on to jobs with more security. So you've got that inconsistency for the people that they're working with at home as well. Like if these were Western Health and Social Care Trust jobs, and they would have the hard fought for terms and conditions that are enjoyed by trust employees. Um, so that's thank all. You. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Um, members, can I remind everybody to keep their remarks stay within the allocated time? Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, for um, allowing me in. And I'd like to put our party's name on the record that we do value our care workers and we appreciate really the professional manner that they carry out their duties, you know, in very, very difficult times. And as some of the rest of the speakers have said, you know, healthcare has been in difficulty for well over a decade now. And look, for healthcare workers, it is a difficult environment. And as I said, for well over a decade or more. But then the pandemic has came along and that has exacerbated the, the situation seriously. But I, I do agree with the motion here that, look, uh, we need to look at a plan. And I do welcome that, you know, we have asked the Western Health and Social Care Trust to come in and provide us with that detailed plan uh, on the costings uh, and how we provide that very important um, care package for people uh, and care for adults, no matter what se sector it's in. And I do think it, it's important that we have them in and have the discussion and see what their plans are and see what the costings is. But no problem, Deputy Mayor, in supporting the notice of motion. Okay, thank you, Alderman Devaney. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chairman Lidson. Uh Happy to support this motion. I uh, and uh, Thanks to Councillor for bringing it forward. And a lot of stuff that's highlighted in this motion, I have I've seen it firsthand. And when you see a lot of the shortages of people get into this work, it is because of the long term, the 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 work rates and the, the stuff around how the terms and conditions or the lack of. And people I may not know or recognise the the vital important role that these workers played during COVID. They played their part even when they hadn't got access to PPE. And then when we come out the far end of it, we see that some of the COVID bonuses was actually removed from them because they couldn't get access to them because the low pay that they were on ruled them out because if they were on other benefits because of the low pay they took it straight off them and it was a, a, a crying shame that, that that happened to them so i think that we as a council need to look at these workers we need to support these workers they play a vital role in our community and we need to stand up for these workers thank you Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. A lot has been said. Uh, and just a reminder to, to us all uh, that, that this is this is a crisis that has built and it was there before COVID. Uh, part of the issue was that people talked about care in the community without establishing the structures uh, to deal with that care in the community. And the main element of care in the community is people the people who undertake the social care work. Uh, I, I commend uh, Councillor Boyle for the motion. Uh, all has been said that needs to be said by others, but just to remind folk, this isn't a new issue that has risen because of COVID. It was there beforehand. We talked about care in the community, but the, and the structures weren't there before we started to actually enact it. Uh, hopefully, uh, we, we can get the plans developed 
to reform adult social care and develop this policy properly. Thanks for the for the motion, Michaela. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Jose. Um, there's no further speakers. I'm going to ask Councillor Boyle to sum up. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor, and thanks to everybody for their comments. Um, uh, understanding that uh, Councillor O'Reilly and the sector that he works in, and Councillor Maeve O'Neill also flagged up particular issues around uh, the sector in terms of um, the comments Councillor O'Neill made around uh, families being discharged and discharge packages and the frustration, frustration families have um, getting access to carers uh, on discharge from hospital and care settings, particularly families within rural areas, because th this affects everybody uh, right across the board, but particularly in rural areas, um, there's a gap in terms of um, carers going into rural areas. Um, so that, that, that is a, an issue. I do appreciate that the comments in terms of the social care sector and social care service was um, broken long before COVID. But um, uh, yes, COVID has exposed the real depth uh, of the gap that exists and what needs to be done. Um, and just to you know, pay tribute to to the many carers and even indeed the people who rely on carers. Um, they depend on carers for much more than the important caring tasks that they, you know, they depend on the contact for the outside world, for bringing them news of what's going on in the local community and around them and, and keeping up to date with, you know, things within their own local areas. So it's, it's, it's you know, carers, as I said, do a very compassionate job. They do it because they're passionate about what they do and they, they do want to help everybody um, that they care for. So just thanks for the comments and, and thanks for the support for the motion. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, um, Michaela. And just before I go to a vote, um, I think it would be right for me just to point out and the, the declaration of interest as an employee of the Western Health and Social Care Trust. Um, but I'm not. I'm not sensing that there's any opposition whatsoever to this motion. And before I take it as unanimous, um, I'm going to give people the opportunity to indicate in the chat box if they don't wish to support this motion or they wish to abstain. No. I'm going to take that motion as unanimous, members. So I'm going to move that motion in, in the name of Councillor Michaela Boyle has, has been passed. Our next motion is in the name of Alderman Hussey. Um, Alderman Hussey, have you a seconder for your motion? I'll second it, Alderman Devaney. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, over to you, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, members, uh, this motion has already passed with the exception of the last sentence, I suppose, and it's not really a motion. Uh, it was a request from Sands that went in through the mayor's office. And uh, what's all of the initial part of the motion is taking part and, and will take part with reference Baby Loss Awareness Week and indeed the International Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day uh, towards the end of that week. Uh, I don't intend to rehearse uh, why we should be doing this, because it's obvious. And SANS are doing a fantastic uh, job in highlighting uh, the issues uh, th that arise when this situation occurs within a family. And um, I'm sure there are those within the, the chamber who can relate uh, to the particular issue of, of, uh, of baby loss awareness, as well as baby loss and pregnancy and infant loss. So I, I want to go to the, the, sec, the last part of the motion. I'm sure others may wish to speak to the first part. And that is the illumination of Derry Castle at Castle Park and Castle Derry. It has already been agreed through the mayor's office, I believe, that the Guildhall and the Tinnies will be lit. And I welcome that and congratulate Sands for, for bringing that forward uh, via the mayor. But the third community in our council area also has a significant uh, SANS representation and, and indeed local um, 
local councillors will be aware of events that do take place in our area uh, supporting SANS. Uh, and I would like that that would be reflected uh, within the Derrick area, the third uh, populated area in, in the council area, by the illumination of Derrick Castle. Uh, I've checked with the asset illumination policy, which I have here, and in section 5.6 of that policy, uh, requests for illuminating an asset may also be presented to council, or sorry, to council by way of a council motion. And I am presenting this as a motion now that we include Derrick Castle in the illumination program for this uh, particular charity. The policy allows a council asset to be lit. The Derrick Castle in Castle Park is a council asset. It has already got lighting, so it should be uh, technically possible to illuminate the particular feature pink and blue, and I urge that that happens. It's also, also policy also talks in terms of a prominent location. Well, those who know the Derrick Castle as you approach uh, coming into our council area by Castle Derrick along that road from Fermanagh, the castle is a very visible element on the landscape and it's visible particularly when it is illuminated. So yes, it is a prominent location. I, I maintain that the proposal fulfills all the needs of the asset illumination policy and I urge support for the motion. Thank you, Mayor, or Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Jose. Um, Councillor Sinai Barr. Thank you, Chair, for letting me in, and thank you, Alderman Hosi, for making this proposal. I think um, baby loss is a sensitive personal topic that affects women from all backgrounds and religions, and um, I think most of us would know someone who have lost a baby. I have family who have experienced stillbirth and miscarriage, and Every year in Northern Ireland, there are on average two to three stillbirths out of 1,000 births. Many of these deaths, especially the stillbirths, are preventable with effective care during pregnancy and childbirth. And even though it is now more widely discussed than in previous decades, women may still face enormous stigma and shame when they, are ex when they experience miscarriage or stillbirth, and they often not encouraged to speak about it. This can lead to isolation and disconnection from their own families, their partners, or even friends. And I want to pay tribute to Councillor Rachel Ferguson for her bravery and courage to share her personal story on the radio last week. I listened to her, and this helped break that stigma and encourage other women to know that they are not alone and to speak about their own losses. I know one woman who reached out to me and said that she had Rachel speak and now she can speak about her own experience. Baby Loss Week is an opportunity to encourage that many women, to acknowledge that many women have experienced loss. Sometimes it's an intensely personal experience, a loss only known to themselves or their families. Most of us would not know what they are going through, but that grief is as personal as it is, we can acknowledge it. And this week where women can share experience and support each other, in many cases, their partners and siblings remember their infant's loss and publicly acknowledge that loss by lighting a candle. Illuminating council building is one way of showing that support, that we support their families, that we support their law, that we acknowledge their loss and that their loss is real and that they are not alone. So the SDLP support this motion and thank you for bringing it today. Thank you, um, Councillor Sinai Barr. Um, Councillor McGinley, Emma. Thank you for letting me in. Um, and thank you to uh, Alderman Hussey for bringing forward the motion. 
Um, on behalf of Sinn Féin, we are fully in support of this motion. Uh, pregnancy and infant loss affects people from all backgrounds across our council area and indeed across this island. Raising awareness and removing the stigma around this loss will help you support those affected as they go through the traumatic experience of coming to terms with their loss and learning to live with their trauma. A dairy woman named Joanne Henry has recently published a book entitled Memoirs of a Mad Mommy, and that sets out as a guide to navigating pregnancy and baby loss. Joanne's aim is to break the stigma around baby loss through sharing her own experiences, and I would encourage everyone to read her book. I'm happy through, and it's an absolute eye-opener to the struggles of people and what they face through pregnancy, pregnancy loss and infant loss. Charitable organisations such as SANS are doing incredible work to support individuals and families who have been impacted by pregnancy and infant loss. And this council also has a facility at Bally Owen where families can bury their stillborn babies and this gives some level of comfort to grieving families. So as I say, Champagne are fully in support of this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. Um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and thank you, Alderman Hussey, for bringing this uh, motion forward. Uh, I think you, you said you didn't want to um, go over the debate again because we've done it, but I think it's a good thing to go over it as much as possible. And I, I thank um, Councillor Sione Barr for kind words about sharing my story, but for me, that was just to open up the conversation for other people to bring their stories and the amount of people who've come to me and told me their stories and, and how listening to someone else talk about their own experience has made them feel more confident about coming forward and, and trying to get rid of that stigma. And and those, as I say, the whispering in the corner around baby loss and, and pregnancy loss, I think the more and more we talk about it, the, the easier it is it's going to be for people to come forward and discuss their own experiences, which will then help us build a more compassionate, caring system around these people and support them. So um, we, we at Alliance are fully supportive of the motion um, and we're even um, more supportive of trying to get another uh, similar illumination in, in Dirt Castle. I think it'd be a fantastic idea to spread the illumination across the city and district wide. So again, uh, Alderman Hussey, really appreciate you bringing this this motion forward and uh, we support it fully. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, for allowing me in. And I do thank Alderman Hussey for bringing forward this motion. Uh, Chair uh, or Deputy Mayor, fully support the work that 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 Sands takes uh, that Sands carries out. I mean, it it, it would be uh, such devastating. I, I mean, you don't know unless you have went through something like that about looking forward to to, to the birth of a child and 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 at not at at you know it would just break your heart to think on it. You you know. I mean, uh, you, you you know there are those that suffer with miscarriages. There's those that suffer that that uh, stillbirths, and and that would just break your heart totally. And and whatever you could do to try to support them and the work that Sands is doing, it's it's first class, and a credit to them to take that on because some people are are more capable to do that. You know, there there you know there people just wouldn't know what to say uh, in such situation, and that's that there is this organisation here, and myself and, and Alden Hussey will well know about. A local lady there who done her for sixtieth birthday, done a big charity cycle and raised a lot of money for Sands, you know, and 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 glad to support her. And and you know it was, you know, you, there's so much of it about, and so many people. It's a thing they just keep quiet and they don't speak about. And and um, it's there. So have to fully support that, and no problem whatsoever in supporting that. Now I think to be fair, there's kind of two parts to this to this motion, and and I will again support. Uh, Alderman Hussey here in regards to the second part here at the tail end of it here because oftentimes when things were on about illuminations and, and uh, such and such a thing has been uh, you know something's been let a certain colour for a certain charity uh, you, you know that was the thing that was in the city that didn't affect us in you, you, you know and if we have that if we can get the castle and as he has stated there castles more than easy to be seen in and out over the bridge there no difficulty at all and it is lit there and, and again, there was, it's not that long ago that they were on about renewing the lights that were at the Tunnies and Stavan. So, so you know, it is good that Castle Laird been the third settlement within the city and district uh, that this could be put forward. And uh, 
We may well be looking towards something on Newton Stewart being the fourth settlement at some stage, but we'll work on that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll make some inquiries, but no, fully support and have council are in a position to try to do something in regards to getting the illumination there. Fully agree with that. So welcome the motion brought forward by Alderman Hussey. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, um, Alderman Kerrigan and um, Councillor O'Neill. Yeah, I um, just want to say people before profit fully support this motion also. Um, I think it's it's good that Alderman Hussey has, you know, brought this issue again. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, we, we can't talk about it enough, really. And I, I do also want to commend uh, Councillor Rachel Ferguson for sharing her own experiences publicly. Um, as in sharing her experiences gives gives other people the strength to share their own experiences, um, you know, with with their support networks and with others, which which really helps with the the healing of such a terrible loss. Um, and I think extending this wave of light to Gaslight Aird is really important for those who have suffered pregnancy and infant loss from the Castle Aird community. So I think um, I think that in particular. Um, um, is very very important. So uh, people before profit fully fully support this motion. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Um, with no further speakers, I'm going to invite Alderman Hussey to sum up. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. And can I say a very sincere thanks to all who have contributed. Uh, it's one of those moments when you get a, a sort of a twist in your stomach, if you understand what I mean. Uh, Councillor Stephen Barr, thank you. Uh, Councillor McGinley, I think maybe this is the start of your your journey with us in the chamber. Uh, I think we can prove we're not always a bear pit. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, Councillor Ferguson, uh, thanks for your support and, and indeed thanks uh, for what, uh, as Councillor Stephen Barr was saying, you have already done. Uh, my dear colleague, Councillor Kerrigan, uh, thank you, Keith. And Councillor O'Neill, uh, you, you've all contributed much more than I could to this debate, uh, and I thank you for that. And I trust that uh, Sands will light up Derrick Castle uh, in aid of uh, or recognising uh, Baby Loss Awareness Week and Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day at the end of that week. Sincere thank you to all. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Alderman Jose. Members, I, like the previous motions, I'm sensing that this will be unanimous. Um, I haven't had any any sense that anybody is um, is not in support of this motion. But before we do take the vote, I'm going to give people opportunity to. to they raise their voice now. If anybody isn't in support of the motion or wishes to abstain for whatever reason, indicate now. Otherwise, I'm taking it as unanimous. Yeah, um, Alderman Hussey, the motion in your name has been passed unanimously. Thank you. Um, members, the next motion. In, in front of us is a motion in the name of Councillor Gallagher. Um, Councillor Gallagher did um, get in touch prior to the meeting and has circulated photographs of the of the the, the police station in Straban and the, the Straban courthouse. So I just want to refer members to their. Uh, the, the photographs that have been emailed um, this afternoon. And I just note that um, Councillor Michaela Boyle has seconded um, Councillor Gallagher's motion, so I'm just going to hand over to yourself. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I think the motion is read. It's uh, very concise. I, and I'll just say a few words on it. Look, I see when we look at these Montreux buildings, they're not welcome. They're very unwelcoming. They are relics of the past. And they are wholly unnecessary. When we look at Straban, they have a real negative image for the town of Straban. 
it gives a real image that Strabane is a hostile place, of which it's not. It gives an image to visitors and those looking to invest in Strabane that it's not a place to go. If these buildings are to remain, they will, they will be viewed as a collective community punishment on the people of Straban because of the conflict. And it's time for them to go. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Um, look, um, I think we have to remind Councillor Gallagher of why um, our police stations have been fortified. Uh, and I see Councillor um, Michaela Boyle has seconded the, 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 the notice of motion here. But I have to say, um, when we look why they've been fortified, you know, they were to protect our police officers. You know, there was a campaign. Um, that was supported by Sinn Féin, um, supported the provisional IRA for well over 30 years, and the murder campaign um, against our police officers, either by shooting or bombings or whatever it may be. But uh, I do have to say, um, look... Um, Alderman Devaney, can, uh, can you keep your remarks as relevant to the, the motion? But I have to say it's good to see that uh, um, they have now said that war is over. But um, what I want to say, um, Deputy Mayor, is we will not be supporting the, the notice of motion here clearly, because very, very clearly here, like it or not, um, there is a serious threat by distant Republicans, yet um, especially the new or real IRA, against our police officers. And I believe it would be a mistake to demilitarise our, our courthouse or the Straban courthouse or any of those um, places. Because at the end of the day, when we look at um, not so long ago, a device was left very, very close to the police station in Straban. And Councillor Gallagher talks about community punishment. I think the people who left that device were the people who carried out the you know community punishment by putting fear on those people who lived close to it, and you know even threatened their lives if that device had a went off. Uh, and look, at the end of the day. Um, Deputy Mayor, we'll not be supporting the motion and at the end of the day, when um, all those threats are cleared of our police officers, that would be the only time that, that, that we would support um, motions like this coming forward very, very clearly, that we have to end all the threats on our police officers across the board. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Devaney. Um, Councillor Michaela, Barr, or Michaela Boyle. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor, um, Sinn Féin will be supporting this motion and I'm glad the member has brought this important issue before us today. This isn't a new issue, this has been something we have been calling for for quite a number of years. Personally, I have lost the count of how many area commanders I've raised this issue with, given the high turnover of personnel within the PSNI locally. Just over the past couple of weeks, Deputy Mayor, we got word of yet another change in the area commander. So our local MP, Orla Begley, has requested an urgent meeting with him, which I will be attending. And we will ensure this is high on the agenda. And I do hope other uh, reps in the Sparing area will be doing the same and keeping the pressure on. When I was MLA, I raised this issue directly with various justice ministers, but unfortunately, it always seemed to fall on deaf ears. And we'll, we get the same lines each time regarding a supposed threat. The barracks in Straban is nothing but an eyesore and residents who live close by in Coatry Park uh, live with this monstrosity of a highly intrusive sanger overlooking their homes, one which isn't even man or fills any purpose. I recently carried out an online survey to ask the public would they like to see the removal of the heavily fortification of this station. All respondents replied yes. The barracks in Straban, the barracks in Castle Derg, and the Straban Courthouse remain, as the um, Councillor Geller said, a stark reminder of our turbulent past and doesn't represent modern day society. So, Deputy Mayor Sinn Fein will continue to call for the modernisation of facilities and how policing operations should go ahead in the future. And if you look at the review carried out in Cross Maglen, 
it does highlight some of the important issues that we have to move forward and we have to move policing forward also. I can understand uh, Alderman de Bene, uh not supporting the motion uh, because I do believe that they genuinely, genuinely don't want to move forward in terms of, you know, having a fair, um, you know, society in which we live in. If the people of Strabane are calling for this heavily fortified building to be demilitarized, we have to listen to the people of Strabane. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Boyle. Um, Alderman McCready. Deputy Mayor, I'd like to submit a an amendment. So I'd like to call for a seconder and then if you'd afford me the opportunity to, to discuss this with members, please. Seconded. Point of order, Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor. Point of order. Just to, to, uh, to be helpful to the, uh, sorry, just to be helpful to Alderman McCready, um, it's actually the uh, British security services that carry out operational risk assessments uh, for those types of uh, buildings, not the chief constable. Um, see, just in terms, of, that's not a point of order, but um, can we get the, the amendment on the screen first um, and then I'll invite Alderman McCready to speak to it. Chair, could I ask for a legal room on the which could put up in the sense that it is a double negative? Yeah, I'll 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 give the city solicitor an opportunity to read it first and then we can in, invite this legal opinion. So thank you, Deputy Mayor, just while um, Teresa is working away at that. Um, just to remind members that um, the um, position in relation to amendments is set out in Standing Order 17.1, and that the requirements are that an amendment is legitimate within the scope of the notice of the meeting, not a direct negative relevant to the proposal which it seeks to amend and not inconsistent with anything already agreed at the meeting relating to the proposal which it seeks to amend and not a proposal proposition in a different matter and not to place a greater responsibility than the original proposal and i can't see anything within the amendment which is proposed which would fall foul of any of the requirements in standing order 17.1 chair okay thank you Philip. um on that note the amendment stands so I'll invite Alderman McCready to speak to the amendment. Deputy Mayor, thank you. And thank you for the clarification from City Solicitor. Uh, firstly, um, I, I welcome the conversation around this. I really do. And I'd like to just reach out to everybody who's listening right now. This is our opportunity to really work together, to have a bit of whether you see it as a, a concession or uh, some aspects to, to to thrash this out so everybody has an intent here 
you know, nobody wants to live in in an environment which has these uh, Sangers and militarized police stations and and Department of Justice buildings. I, I really get that and, and I fully understand the intent and I share that intent with everyone, all members uh, and all of our constituents and those who live and work within our society. And the, the reality is that yes, there is a threat, there is a risk. I've spent 18 years uh, within the MOD uh, doing different things uh, for the good benefit of our society. So I, I see I see the aspect of this. So I, I'm calling on members to, to th th this amendment does not detract in any way. I think it would expedite uh, in, in good sense to, to get to a point where we can have a readout from whether it's you know, driven by the chief constable or, you know, part of the British uh, security services, you know, who support the PSNI um, to conduct an operational risk assessment, uh, you know, look at the infrastructure, the security uh, architect that we have and and really look at that in detail. So we get our own specific report. I, I don't take the the argument that, well, oh, it would happen in across McGlenn, let's do it everywhere. You know, when it comes to risk and threats and, and when you look recently in our city, there are still people on the streets with long barreled automatic weapons who have got no problem firing those weapons. Those bullets have to land somewhere. They're going to land within our community. It's only a matter of time, you know, before it hits it hits someone and then we'll, we'll, we'll all be up in arms. Well, too late. But, but back to the, this point here, members, look at, look, look at this in detail. This enhances your emotion. Uh, you know, and this is a way to get uh, uh, Morris and, and the DUP and anybody else who would oppose because I certainly oppose the, the motion as it stood because it took no consideration. It didn't take due regard for uh, the police service uh, and and their uh, health, safety and risk assessments. So it needs to be a balanced approach. It needs to be done objectively, not subjectively on the back end of, of a report from Cross McGlenn, which did get a lot of media hype, et cetera. But let's take charge of our, our own areas. Alderman yeah. McCurdy, can you bring your remarks there, close? Yes, thank you, Deputy. Mayor, and my last remark is, I really want people to find common ground in this. Look at it. It's, it's it, this is not the, the divisive in any way with that amendment. Without the amendment, it is creating division. So please meet us halfway in this, folks. Thanks. Okay, um, Councillor McKinney. Thank you for that, Mayor. Chair. Um, uh, I sort of. I want to speak on the amendment, but I want to put an amendment in the amendment, if you understand me, because the wording is slightly incorrect in the overall uh, amendment and the original proposal. You know, whilst I appreciate the sentence behind Councilor, the motion. Councillor McKinney, I, no, just to, to remind you, we, we have to take a decision on this amendment first, and if you wish to pose another amendment, you can do so, but um, the amendment that's in front of us is the one that's on the screen. It was just basic wording and point yep. something out, that was all. But yes, Chair, sure, I'll wait till the vote on the amendment. If that's okay with you, sir. Yeah. De the Deputy Mayor, it's Ryan here. If there's a grammar issue, I'm surely we can resolve that now as opposed to changing or having someone either support or not support the amendment. So is there latitude there that if it is a case of grammar, I'm certainly happy to be corrected. Uh, Grammatically, so I'll, I'll let that for you to consider, Chair. Yeah, uh, Con Councillor McKinney, I allow you to, to explain your amendment, but I'm not going. We, if if that if it's making if you're making a change, uh, a material change to the, the the amendment that's in front of us, then we can't take it until after we've taken a vote on this. Um, no, look, okay. Do you want to explain what your amendment does? Sorry. Do you want to explain what your your suggestion well, well, where you, um, you prepared to hold? Well, basically, it's uh, the pace and state is a matter for the chief constable and the policing board, and not the Ministry of Justice. Simple as that. I would just ask that be put in. That's all. Okay. We'll we'll, we'll take that as a separate amendment. After, okay. Um, Thank just, you. Councillor Jason Barr, do you want to speak on the original motion or the amendment? The original motion, please, Deputy Mayor. Uh, 
but we're uh, we're discussing the amendment at the minute, so I'll come back to you. There's other indicated speakers. Um, Councillor Harkin, do you wish to speak on the amendment? Or I'm happy to speak, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, go on ahead. Yeah, I, I don't think the amendment is necessary. Um, I think that the uh, when our council, if we pass this, those with responsibility for looking at this will do it, whether we have anything in there about a risk, risk assessment or not. I think the issue here is um, the demand from people in Strabane that uh, their uh, town is demilitarized. And we have had a promise that our society would be demilitarized. Um, and it's unfortunate that some parts uh, and areas that that hasn't happened yet. I grew up in Rosemount across the street from the Rosemount barracks. I have to say I hated it. Uh, I would wake up every morning and look out my front window, my bedroom window, and a, um, a soldier would be staring directly across the street at me. So I'm very happy to say now that all the evidence of that building is absolutely gone. And I, and, and I think that uh, this is something that um, people in Rosemount and across the city and across our district have absolutely every right to. So um, I believe that people in Strabane uh, and elsewhere should have the same right. And I think that, um, you know, our council is saying that this should be moved forward. Uh, and I think that that's the most important thing that um, that's the most important thing that we can do. So uh, we'll be happy to support the uh, original motion. Thank you. OK, um, Alderman Devaney. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Uh, and look, as we read the amendment here, we uh, we would have no problem uh, in supporting the, the amendment. Uh, I think this gives everyone a, a fair argument or, or, and around the issue. Uh, and I know some people talk there about protecting the people in Strabane. Surely this would be a belt and braces and around that uh, if we were able to get a risk assessment from the, the authorities here that has been mentioned. Um, to see what they're feeling and take on board the risk from um, distant Republicans and others. So we would be very supportive of the amendment, Deputy Mayor. Okay, um, Alder, Alderman Hussey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, Councillor Harkin referred to deep militarization. Um, perhaps there are others that need to be asked, where's the demilitarization? Because you know what you're talking about here is protection from military action against police. And I would ask everyone to remember, you're not just talking about police, you're talking about other staff who work within uh, buildings like this. Uh, and surely to goodness, everyone can agree, if there is a threat, they deserve protection. If there is not a threat, that can be determined by an operational risk assessment. And in that case, demilitarization, absolutely, let's get on with it. Uh, the folk inside those establishments no longer want to be stuck behind walls uh, than anyone else wants to be looking at the walls from the outside. It would be great to see the station in, in Strabane uh, looking like the station in Oma. Uh, which is aesthetically a lot more appealing and more accessible, etc. That is actually what uh, the police service themselves, the ordinary con on the ground, everyone else working within that circumstance wants. So I support the amendment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alderman Jose and Councillor Gallagher on the amendment. Thank you, Chair, for the same. And I'll, I'll say one thing. I uh, I can appreciate Alderman McKinney's tone and spirit of, of his amendment, but I don't agree with it because it's very much it's conditional. And uh, and I would say to him and others who spoke uh, against this that if we were talking about the same police stations and the same courthouses. With the same image, if they were in Korean, Fort Rush, Balamina, Larn, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't be having it. And you see, Straban 
is no higher risk for rain, poor brush, ballymena or larn. So this amendment should not be conditional. And what I said earlier, if this remains the way it is, it will be viewed by the people of Straban as a collective community punishment. I will not be standing by and letting that happen. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Gallagher. Um, Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And I've done exactly what Alderman McCready requested, which was to read this and really think about it. And uh, whilst I have thought about it, I can't support the um, amendment primarily because uh, I don't for a second believe um, if a risk assessment was carried out, we would ever be told what it says. Uh, I also think, it, you know, let, let's be realistic here. Uh, like I said, um, it was to be helpful and not to be uh, smart about it. It's the security services who carry out risk assessments of these types of buildings. And I don't believe for a second that they would tell this council or anybody else, for example, for, for that matter, the truth about what a risk assessment said whether it meant um, that uh, something would be militarized or demilitarized. Um, so I, I don't think, whilst I, I do accept that Ryan's amendment is probably um, comes from a place of common sense and has perspective, I just don't think that they, we would ever be told what the outcome of, of a risk assessment um, as, and especially it's going to the wrong place. The other aspect of it as I suppose just in the general thrust of the motion is, you know, what, it's, I suppose, from a, uh, an overall viewpoint, it's uh, nothing that I couldn't support. Um, but I do think that the Cross McGlynn Police Station report um, is about much more than the facade of a police station in Cross McGlynn or uh, in Straban. Um, I've, you know, Aintu's on the record of saying that we should have a, a Cross McGlynn style report for policing in Derry, and we should. Because, like I say, it is much more than about uh, the facade. Because I could say, uh, look at Strand Road, um, it's still as far from a police station as I can think of. Um, but in terms of of the amendment, um, I can't uh, I can't support it for the uh, for the basis outlined. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Um, moving. Councillor Jason Bard doesn't want to, it's not the amendment that you want to speak on. So, as if there's nobody else um, that wishes to speak on the amendment, I'm going to take the amendment to a vote. Point of order, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, um, Alderman Hussey. Uh, as proposer of the amendment, is uh, Alderman McCoy not allowed to respond? But the advice that I've received is that there's there's no uh, opportunity to sum up as a proposer of an amendment. That 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 opportunity is afforded to the proposer of the motion. Um, members, that um, we've got an amendment in front of us, and which has been seconded. Um, I'm going to. I'm getting a sense that the amendment is not unanimous, so I'm going to ask the chief executive to take us to uh, a vote on this. Thank you, Chair. Alderman Breslin? For. Alderman Devaney? For. Alderman Guy? For. Alderman Hussey? For. Alderman Carrigan? For. Alderman McClintock? For. Alderman McCready? For. Alderman Ramsey? For. Councillor Jason Barr. Bar. Councillor John Boyle. Barr. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Against. Councillor Carr. Against. Councillor Cusick. For. Councillor Dobbins. For John. Councillor Donnelly. Councillor Doyle. Against. Councillor Duffy? Against. Councillor Edwards? 
Mr. Jones. Councillor Farrell. For. Councillor Ferguson. For John. Councillor Fleming. Against John. Councillor Gallagher. Against. Councillor Harkin. Against. Councillor Heaney. Against John. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Kelly. Against John. Councillor McGinley. Against. Councillor McHugh. Councillor McHugh. Councillor McKinney. Four John. Four. Councillor Mooney. Say again, Councillor Mooney. John. Sorry, Councillor Mooney. Just say again, please. Four John. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Against. Councillor Riley. Four John. Councillor Sinoy Barr. Four John. Councillor Tierney. Four. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, I've recorded 24, 12 against, no abstentions, so the amendment passes. Okay, um, so the amendment becomes a substantive motion, and I'm going to invite um, Councillor um, Barr, the Jason Barr, to come on and, uh, and speak on the Original thank, motion. Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, for letting me in. Uh, just to state the position there on the amendment, uh, no matter what uh, our risk assessment would have had to have been carried out anyway, um, whether or not that uh, motion went through. Um, so that's why we in SDLP supported the amendment, as that would have to happen as, as, as procedure. So, but just on the, uh, on the full uh, substantive motion, um, the police station in Strabane Town is a relic of the past and should be either removed or replaced. Gone are the days of the troubles and the need for military like fortification. The PSNA are trying to modernise, and we welcome that, but this shouldn't be limited to Cross McGlenn. Straban is equally as important, and if we were ever to change the image of the police here and now, here and how they are seen by local people. people. Equally, Castle Derrick Police Station is an absolute eyesore, where a rural community has been abandoned only to be left with a ruinous site in the centre of the town. This needs to be sold off with a view of attracting investment in the town, and we are glad to see that the PSNA have recently agreed to dispose of this site. The SDLP has raised this in our local MLA for the Straban area, Daniel McCrossan, has also raised this with the PSNA in the past around Straban town and Castle Derrick. But nothing seems to be changing. The PSNA really need to be brought up to the 21st century, and that includes updating and modernising their existing stations. Equally, in terms of Straban Courthouse and even Oma Courthouse, the SDLP have been lobbying consecutive justice ministers to take action on this. We need to modernise these facilities, making them welcoming and suitable for the 21st century. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, um, Councillor Barr. Um, Councillor McKinney, do you wish to make your amendment? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Look, um, whilst I come quickly again, whilst I appreciate the sentiment behind the motion on the matters for the PSN and his state is a matter for the Chief Constable and the Policing Board, the Ministry of Justice has no jurisdiction to uh, take. Councillor McKinney. Matter. Okay. Now, may I just finish, please? So I would Can ask I, the amendment uh, to be Chief Constable and the Policing Board. It's a pain at PS and I state matter. Chief Constable and Policing Board have to be consulted on it as well. Yeah, and, and all I'm was... asking for is that the uh, the amendment to read the right chief constable and policing board, and that's it. Chair, sure. yeah. uh, all, all I was asking for was was a, a seconder for your proposal before you spoke to it. Um, but sorry, chair, I do <laughs> apologise. Chair, I'll second that. Yeah. Sorry, chair.
Okay, are, are you finished, Councillor McKinney? Yeah, once and for all. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no problem. Um, Councillor Gellher, do you want to speak to the amendment? For that, my son. Uh, I, I wish to say I'm, I'm very shocked. Well, I suppose I'm not really, but very disappointed in the SDLP who supported this amendment. For I believe that supporting this amendment, they have abandoned the people of Straban. Point of they, order, Chair. They've abandoned the people who Sangers are sitting. Point of order. Point, point of order. Point of order. They, they have point, abandoned. Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Gallagher. Point, point of order. Uh, point of we're we're dealing with Biden. the amendment on the floor from Councillor McKinney at this stage, not an yeah. amendment that has been voted on and passed. Yeah. And, and um, Chair, they, on occasions, you have a let. Uh, member speak on the entire motion. Yeah, I, I, I asked. I asked yourself, um, Councillor Gallagher, did you wish to speak to the amendment? Um, yes. And there, there will be an opportunity to speak to the, the substantive motion as well. Um, and 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 I suppose again, as as proposer of the motion, you've got the opportunity to sum up. So thank you. Um, so, later on. so um, I just. Is there anybody wishes to speak to the amendment as submitted by um, Councillor McKinney? No. Um, is there is there anybody in opposition to the amendment as submitted by Councillor McKinney, or is there anybody wishes to abstain from the amendment? Chair. Sure. Councillor Gallagher, do you wish to, you, you, you're not in support of the amendment? I'll abstain, no. Okay. Deputy Mayor, can I also abstain? Okay, is there anybody other than Councillor Gallagher and Councillor Doyle that wishes to abstain? Chair, also abstaining. Okay. I'm myself, Chair, Sean Kerr. Myself, Chair. Just, just to be. On the on the right side of this, let's. So we've five abstentions. Chair, point of order, John Boyle. Chair, if there's that number of people here declaring one way or another, for me, just go straight to a vote on this. There's there's only one chair of the meeting, Councillor Boyle. Um, my point of order isn't yeah, it's, that. It's, it's, that's not a, it's not a point of order, Councillor. Well, actually, it is because we've had it before where we've gone for the, the, the recorded vote when people have started shouting on the right, left, and centre. Councillor, but uh, I'm satisfied that the the vote that has been called um, is reflective of the vote of, of the, the mood of the, the, the wishes of meeting, um, and as of. Now we've got five abstentions. I'm assuming I'm thinking that the rest of the meeting is in support of the addition of those four words as according to the amendment put forward by Councillor McKinney. So if there's no further comment, I'm going to take that new, uh, amendment as being passed with the five recorded abstentions. So this motion now, uh, the, the amendment, this now becomes the substantive motion. Um, is there anybody wishes to speak to the on the substantive motion? Councillor McCready or Alderman McCready. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, and thanks everyone for at least giving it some consideration. You know how you vote is entirely uh, your prerogative. Um, Deputy Mayor, I, I did see this as an opportunity for us to go beyond politics, uh, to challenge the status quo on on how we did things in the past. And only until we start doing things differently, whether it's these type of motions, how, how we work together and have that level of, of latitude where we can see things from a different perspective, but you have a common goal. And with this motion here, we did have a common goal. We want to remove these um, you know, ghastly things which are left over, uh, you know, of the legacy of troubles and 
and and all that came with it. And it is a nice one, a reminder for those who live through the troubles. You know, so I, I really do get that. And but it, as everything we do, we must be considerate, look at all angles. And uh, in this case here, I would just like to thank those who did take uh, uh, you know to dig deep and to have courage to to change their position or not necessarily their position, but certainly to to look at things slightly differently and and to accommodate. Uh, and 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 those who did that, you did change the outcome of this motion. You can see those who initially, myself included, my party, and others who would be in opposition to it as it was originally. But to where it is now, it's manageable. We've now got a process. You know, we can stand behind it uh, largely together uh, as a, a corporate entity and council. And uh, and lastly, uh, in fact, I'm going to f finish off there. Thanks very much for. Uh, Councillor Gallagher to bring this motion forward. It is timely. Um, we do support it now in, in, in its current form. And I look forward to, to bringing some normality back to this city and district. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McCready. Um, Councillor Doyle. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor. And um, I think it's an important debate to be had. Um, but at the same time, I think after the um, respect to the, the members we've brought forward, Amendments, and I think that that the the, the motion's a bit of a dog's dinner, because as I've said, demilitarisation isn't down to the people we're asking to write letters to. So we're basically going to get letters back and say, "I haven't got anything to do with us," and then the motion and the thrust behind the motion won't have gone anywhere. Um, so at this stage, um, I will be abstaining on the substantive motion. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Chair, for that man. Um, uh, I know we probably is not too happy about the way it turned out, but thank you to Councillor Gallagher for bringing the motion. Um, these police stations are, you know, they're an eyesore and, and they're a reminder of the past. And, you know, coming from someone who spent many years of them um, in the UK and where some of the police stations were little houses, it, you know, it is something that I would love to see in the future, my children not having having to say, you know, we talk about the uh, Straban uh, police station. We also have the Strand Road and then we have Maidown, which is even, you know, I think bigger, which is just complete metal. And it would be great to see these um, more friendly, more open police stations uh, come out of this process. But again, that has to come with a reasonable amount of adjustment and the fact that we do need to make sure, you know, our police do carry guns for their own safety. It's not for anything else because there is that threat out there. So I, I, I think it's reasonable to ask about a risk assessment. And I think it's something that we're, we all want the, the, the end goal, which is to not need these type of PlayStations. So um, on that, you know, we are more than happy to support this motion tonight. And hopefully it is a, it'll be a change in the future. We'll see different PlayStations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Ferguson. Um, Councillor um, Michaela Boyle. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I just want to say I'm deeply disappointed that the original motion has failed, and um, I believe that the, the you know in terms of the conditions have been met for it to be demilitarised. Um, unfortunately. Um, I do believe that uh, the amendment is a waste of time, as I said in my comments, speaking on the original motion, I raised this issue directly with various justice ministers, with the PSNI, with with everyone that, you know, that had a responsibility for this police station and indeed the courthouse. It fell on deaf ears and we got the same response all the time. In fact, I could write the response to the assessment. I have it in my inbox. Um, I do believe, and uh, you know, the people of Straban have been dealt a, a, a bad card here tonight. And, and you know, we are putting pressure on day and daily for this to be demilitarised. Um, I, I, you know, I'm disappointed that the original motion failed, but we do want to advance this. We do want to see it demilitarised. So, Reluctantly, we will be supporting the substantive motion now, but I have to say, you know, the people in Straban want this uh, to happen ASAP. Uh, they have stated that uh, time and time again. And as Councillor Gallagher said, 
if this was Ballymena, Port Rush or anywhere else, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michaela, um, Councillor Harkin. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, like others, uh, we are uh, deeply disappointed that the original motion has been uh, transformed into something that is uh, not really, uh, I believe, going to um, send the message that the original motion wanted to send, which was about speed up the process of demilitarization because uh, Straban Town uh, is, feels like it's a forgotten place. And I do think it sends the wrong message to everybody that lives in Straban. Um, so it's very disappointing. And I will say this, look, people who uh, live in areas that are ravaged by war, and I'll give you the example of Afghanistan, have every right, uh, and the people uh, of Afghanistan right now, have every right to demand and act to make sure that ev every bit of evidence of the Western powers that went down there and murdered, caused mayhem through 20 years of occupation. They have the right to demilitarization as soon as possible. Um, and people are no different here. And uh, so that I'll finish on that point. Thank you, Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Deputy Mayor, uh, point of order or clarification, please. Is it, is it a point of order? Yes, I think. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I've just been accused of murdering people in Afghanistan because I did serve there. So I don't know how to address this in a in this forum. Well, well you, this isn't the forum to address this. Um, if, if you Can you correct the member to retract the statement then, please, Chair? I, I, see, see if I, I can't ask the, 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 the member to retract anything. Um, and if you've got an issue with the comment that was was read, raised by the member, there is avenues um, for challenge to do that. Okay. Can I have a legal opinion on that, please? And then I'll, I'll take it offline. Thanks. Okay. Um, City Solicitor. Yeah, Chair, the position is, as you outlined, there are mechanisms which are available if the uh, member has an issue that he believes another member has acted inappropriately. Chair, can I quickly comment? To clarify, I didn't accuse anyone. I, I talked about the Western powers. Um, so there's no accusation about anybody in this chamber or any individual. So um, I, I think that the uh, alderman is wrong to think I'm making that accusation. Okay. Um, I'm going to move this conversation on. And the, the next indicated speaker is Alderman Deveni. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, for um, allowing me in. And uh, we have no problem in supporting the substantive motion here. It very clearly um, carries out a risk assessment from, uh, and I know Councillor Gallagher is adamant that he wouldn't support this, but he talks about the people of Straban. I'm sure the majority of people in the Straban area would like to see their, their, their local police officers being protected to the highest level. And I don't think they, they, they would. The majority, as I say, would like to see the police officers protected. And look, as I said in my opening remarks about the, the notice of motion as it came forward, I, I did say, uh, if, you know, when the word is clear that the threat is gone um, to our police officers and our police officers, our police officers feel safe and those who work within the police, of, police station feel safe, I think that's a discussion that, that we need to have then. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you, um, Alderman Devaney. With no further indicated speakers, I'm going to invite Councillor Gallagher to sum up. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair. Uh, once again, uh, this amendment has been brought in, and I find myself in a position where I can't support it. And I've outlined a number of reasons why. That very much this amendment is conditional. It's about spooks in a back room deciding what's best for the people of Straban, which they've never done in the past and they won't again do in the future. So I'm very, very shocked, uh, disappointed and uh, in, in the SDLP for siding with unionists who have no intention uh, of supporting the people of Straban, where Sanger's cameras are constantly looking on their windows 
and, and their living room windows, their bedroom windows, they're actually encroaching in their back gardens. That the intention of the original motion was to get rid of that because, and the reason being because it's not wanted, it's not welcomed, it's not necessary. All those things doesn't require a risk assessment. It doesn't require a risk assessment in Korean, Ballymena, Larne, Portrush. Doesn't it doesn't require them down there, and the unions parties wouldn't be calling for them to be erected down there, and cameras going up wouldn't do any good for the Gulf. Cameras. Let the police officers. Let the PSNA tell us they're not wanted. Uh, they oh, wouldn't, oh, wouldn't do the Gulf any good for Sangers to be gone up and the visitors down in Port Rush seeing barbed and Sangers and uh, high, high, high walls and cameras going all over the place. They wouldn't be putting up with it. So the people of Straban won't be putting up with it. And shame on the SDLP for supporting this amendment. Okay, um, thank you, Councillor Gellher. And with the proposer of the motion summing up that the debate on this has has ended and um they they keep everybody happy um and not the offend um councillor Boyle. I'm gonna ask the chief executive to take us through a vote. Thank you, members. Alderman Breslin. Alderman Breslin. Four John. Alderman Devaney. Four. Alderman Guy. Alderman Guy. Alderman Hussey. Ford. Alderman Carrigan. Four John. Alderman McClintock. Four John. Alderman McCready. Four. Alderman Ramsey. Four. Councillor Jason Barr. Four. Councillor John Boyle. Four. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Four. Councillor Carr. Four. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Councillor Carr. Against John. Councillor Cusick. Four. Councillor Dobbins. Four. Councillor Donnelly, I don't think is with us. Councillor Doyle. Abstain, John. Councillor Duffy. Councillor Duffy. Aye, four, John. Councillor Edwards. Four, John. Councillor Farrell. Four. Councillor Ferguson. Four, John. Councillor Fleming. Four, John. Councillor Gallagher. Against. Councillor Harkin. Abstain. Councillor Heaney. Four, John. Councillor Jackson. Four, four John. Councillor Kelly. Councillor McGinley. Four, John. Councillor McHugh. Four. Councillor McKinney. Four. Councillor Mooney. Four, John. Councillor O'Neill. Abstain. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sinoy Barr. Four, John. Councillor Tierney. Four. Thank you all. On, uh, I vote four as well. Sorry, I missed there. It was out of the room. Thank you, Alderman Guy. Deputy Mayor, I've recorded 28 for, two against, and three abstentions. So the motion passes. Okay, members, um, that motion has passed. Members, it's 21 minutes past 10. I'm going to suggest we take a 10 minute comfort break. Um, so we'll reconvene at um, half 31 minutes past 10. So I'll see you in 10 minutes.
Good evening, members. Members, um, just before we move on to the next motion, um, members are going to be conscious of the time. It's it's half it's half ten now, and we've still nine motions to go. So it's extremely unlikely that we're going to conclude in the business of today's meeting at tonight's meeting. Um, but what I'm going to do is um, suggest we we proceed for another hour. Um, and we'll take stock again at half past 11. So I'm going to move on now to the next notice of motion, which is a motion in the name of Councillor Kiar. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I put it to the floor. I'm looking for a seconder for this motion. I need a seconder, Chair. Yeah. Oh. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Kiar, going ahead. Thank you. I checked the motion as read, Chair. Okay. Uh, hof hopefully, every councillor and party uh, will support this motion tonight. The lack of court services provision in this city and district affect many citizens, including some extremely vulnerable people. This issue raises serious questions about the basic human right, the right to access to justice. Any one of us can find ourselves in the criminal justice system, whether it's facing a criminal charge as a victim of crime, being called as a witness to give evidence, supporting a family member, or accompanying a vulnerable person, or in jury service. Poor proceedings are very stressful enough with the added burden of having to travel considerable distance and the cost of this, not to mention the hassle of having the early morning, in some cases, childcare arrangements. Dairy, dairy Crown Court proceedings are currently taking place in Coleraine. Getting from Derry to Coleraine Courthouse before 10 is not straightforward if you rely on public transport. The reality is that many court users do not have a car. Many of us have heard this from many of our constituents experience, experienced over the last 18 months. It's a challenge, as we know in Derry here at times, getting a taxi to get to even the railway station. You get the cold rain, you have a half an hour's walk to out of the out of town courthouse. Uh, and like the people of Belfast and east of Aban don't have to jump through hoops to access basic human rights. The rights to justice. While we understand in the on onset of the public of the pandemic and the lack of facilities in Bishop D Courthouse to accommodate social distancing prompted the transfer of the Crown Court proceedings, it is very concerning that 18 months down the line, court services in the Department of Justice have not seen seem to have any road maps for the return to Bishop Street. Aside from fighting the denial of rights of the citizens, as a council, we cannot afford to have any businesses or footfall diverted away from the city. Hotels, cafes, restaurants, shops are all affected by the transfer of the court business. Although this motion focuses on Crown Court proceedings, it also refers to the fact that there has been issues of other aspects of justice systems it is often staggering to get into uh, several hearings of inquests in Derry. During the pandemic, families had to endure trips up and down to the Nightingale Court in Belfast for inquest hearings. We need to hold the court services and the Department of Justice accountable. Long term investment in our courthouse is overdue. We need to bring all interesting parties together to find a short term and long term solution to this issue now. Right. And I ask members okay. for this report tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kiar. Um, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Chair. 
The Justice Minister Long has continually answered questions and queries in regards to Bishop Street Courthouse in recent weeks and every time she stated, whether it be on the Assembly floor, individual members' questions or on social media, that there is no plans to move the services from the Courthouse to Coleraine. To imply this service is in jeopardy or will be discontinued is scaremongering and unhelpful. Rather than play politics with such fundamental pillar of our democracy, um, I think we really should acknowledge and welcome the goodwill completed by the department, specifically the courts and the tribunal service and their will and willingness to keep the jury trials going during lockdown. I don't like getting into the where Councillor uh, Doyle would say um, my minister um, game, but I think there are inaccuracies about this motion where I do see the importance to making sure that our court service are staying here in Derry. Um, I uh, would like to propose a amendment which I'd sent earlier on today to the committee section. Um, I'm just wondering if it would if it's been able to be put up on screen. Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, Councillor Ferguson, is there a seconder for that amendment? Second it, Chair. Mr. McKinley. Okay, um, Councillor McKinley, do you wish to speak on the amendment or do you wish to come back on the original motion? Uh, the original motion. Chair. Okay. Um, Councillor O'Neill, do you wish to comment on the amendment? Um, yeah, I can. Like, I think the in terms of having post COVID, it changes the nature of the motion. Um, just wondering, but uh, yeah, I can I can speak uh, like. I can speak to it as a whole because like, I, like, I think I welcome Councillor Carr bringing this to Council. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't support the amendment. Um, like people before profit, Emily, Jerry Carl has raised this with the Minister. Um, and the response we felt was inadequate and unconvincing. And it's another example of a Stormont Minister being dismissive of issues west of the ban. We, like here in Derry, we've had our electoral office taken away. Uh, people now have to leave Derry if they want to take a driving test. And now the, the courthouse here can't even give access to justice for local people here. It just feels like Derry is being struck clean. So, you know, I think, you know, we really need to call the minister out in this and I cannot um, accept the amendment here. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mooney, Councillor do you want to speak on the amendment or? Do you wish to reserve your comments for the original motion? No, Chair, I think I can speak on on, on the amendment here. Um, there's probably only one part of the, of the amendment that I could actually agree with, and that would be jury in paragraph two. The rest I couldn't actually um, agree on. Um, there is definitely, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say from the outset that uh, but it was a previous, my previous occupation, it was a solicitor who travelled to knows Bishop State's courthouse intimately and Corian courthouse. And there will be inherent inconvenience to uh, to defendants, practitioners, um, jurors, professional witnesses going to court in courthouse, uh, especially when we, especially when our crown court should be sitting here in Derry. So, um, on that basis, we won't be supporting an event. Chair, thank you. Okay, um, thank you, um, Alderman McCready. Again, do you wish to speak on the amendment, or do you wish to reserve? 
Your comments for the, the substantive motion? Or for the substantive you... motion, please, Deputy Mayor. Okay. Um, Alderman Ramsey, again to yourself, do you wish to comment or speak on the amendment? Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, no, um, the issue all along in this here is the fear of the move, um, of, you know, like a commitment. Uh, our own profession, legal profession locally, um, had fears of, you know, that we were going to end up um, having been transferred. Um, and basically the issue we have is that that would be a disaster as it has been for like quite a while now for many, many people. Um, but this amendment reassures us that we are going to have uh, our courts back here. Now, obviously there's an infrastructure issue, but um, we welcome the amendment and we support the amendment. Um, and just while speaking on this, um, uh, I, I think we have to condemn what has just come through in the news there. Minister Swan um, has received another threat and has, has to have security reviewed. And just to note that, uh, just when we're on here. Um, but no, we support the motion and um, welcome the motion. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alderman Ramsey. And just following your comments on the on the threat or the news of, of a threat towards um, I'm a, a health minister, um, again, on, on behalf of the entire council, um, we would like to wholeheartedly condemn any threat um, and any form of intimidation towards an elected representative um, going about his, his or her um, role in, in representing and providing a service for the, the citizens right across the north. Um, we have no further comments on the amendment. So, um, and and I, I, I do sense a difference of opinion, so I'm going to take the amendment to a vote and we pass over to this um, the chief executive. John. Thank you, Alderman Bresland. Or John. Alderman Devaney. Or. Alderman Guy. Alderman Guy. Alderman Hussey. Or. Alderman Carrigan. John. For. Alderman McClintock. <clears throat> Alderman McClintock. Or John. Alderman McCready. For. Alderman Ramsey. Or Councillor Jason Barr. Against. John, I don't know if you picked up. Both Darren and I answered at the same time. Uh, I didn't pick that up, thank you. Um, Councillor John Boyle. Against the amendment. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Against, John. Councillor Carr. Against, John. Councillor Cusick. Against, John. Councillor Dobbins. Councillor Dobbins. I think Andrew's just having some technical difficulties at the minute. Um, John will try and get her to vote in the chat box. Thank you. Councillor Donnelly. No. Councillor Doyle. Against. Councillor Duffy. Against. Councillor Edwards. Against. Councillor Farrell. Against. Councillor Ferguson. For John. Councillor Fleming. Against John. Councillor Gallagher. Against. Councillor Harkin. Against. Councillor Heaney. Against John. Councillor Jackson. Against. Councillor Kelly. Against. Councillor McGinley. Against. Councillor McHugh. Against John. Councillor McKinney. For John. For. Councillor Mooney. Against. Councillor O'Neill. Against. Councillor Riley. Against. Councillor Sinai Barr. 
Against amendment, John. Councillor Tierney. Against. Thank you. Uh, just checking, did we get something from Councillor Dobbins? I think she's still having persistent issues with her connection, but she's going to try and log off and log on again, John. Thanks. I'll have I'll have to press ahead now with the count. Yeah, no, that's Ellie. fine. I'll okay, let her know. Thank Thanks, you. John. Um, Deputy Mayor, I have recorded uh, 10 for and 22 against, so the amendment falls. Okay, so we revert back to the original motion and the next indicated speaker that I've got on my list is um, Councillor McGinley. We'll just... Um, Perfect. There, there we go. Um, Ahead, Emma. Uh, Chair for that man. Uh, Sinn Féin are happy to support Councillor Clare's initial motion um, calling for these services to be reinstated in Derry Court rather than being held in Chlorine. It's rightly been brought to this council as Derry is the second largest city in the north and our residents have a right to access a full justice system here in the city. The repercussions of services being administered in Chlorine have been far reaching. For example, if people are being called for jury duty, they have to attend Chlorine Court. That applies to solicitors, victims and witnesses who are all part of these cases. And if a case runs for more than a day, which can often happen, it means that multiple commutes for these groups of people, and that's just inconvenient and it's absolutely unacceptable. We need and deserve a court system that works for us all and allows court proceedings of all types to be held here in the city. So that's why Sinn Féin are happy to support this motion. Thank you, um, Councillor McGinley. The next indicated speaker was Alderman McCready. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, welcome to the motion. It's timely and it is. Uh, it has been an issue over you know, the past number of months. Uh, the, uh, I suppose, the point where you know you're innocent until proven guilty. You know everyone should be should have a, a fair trial and, and access to justice and. Sometimes, you know, the, the justice system would get a bad name because, well, it puts people behind bars, but a large portion of those people are, are supporting justice, delivering justice or, or, you know, contributing in some way. And, you know, I did get a number of calls uh, pertaining to uh, jury service and, you know, the hindrance of core rain. And I know it is 45 minutes down the road, but it is quite disruptive if you've got to do that, you know, daily, weekly and as part of your job. The, the other aspect of this where, I, I, I do think uh, there is a bit of um, substance to, you know, if, if you do let part of your city erode and when it comes to your, you know, your critical infrastructure, you know, your judicial systems, your, your police stations, your fire stations and, and all aspects of, of what keeps society safe and functioning, then, you know, we have, we have to remind ourselves and remind, you know, all the departments, uh, irrespective of whether it's our ministers or not, that we are the second city in, in Northern Ireland, or however you, you want to term this location. And you know, we should have a full comprehensive uh, judicial system. And you know, so I do welcome uh, this motion. I do hope that we can get some resolution in due course, whether it's interim mitigation measures to keep the place safe, uh, but to get some of those um, uh, systems and processes back in the heart of our city. Um, so thanks for bringing it forward. Unfortunate about the motion, but I am behind the motion either way. So it's the same outcome. That's what we have to remember. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, Alderman McCready. Um, Councillor Mooney. Yes, Chair. Thank you for allowing me to come on the substantive motion. But just to concur with everybody else's uh, views on this, uh, Alderman McCready and. Um, Councillor McGinley, I mean, when I saw the motion come out, um, I had the opportunity speaking to a former colleague of mine, and what we was we were discussing the, the elements of the motion, and just really what he had to say was he was saying, and next month he's got a, a trial in Corain, very serious one, it's listed for six weeks here, so he has to obviously leave Derry, travel to Corain every day, that's including number one for him, the judge will have to go to Corain as well, uh, but secondly, more importantly, it would be the defendants and the witnesses, but. Probably the most important part of a jury trial is the jury itself. That's 12 people from this from our city and district who have to travel to Corain for six weeks out of their life. 
travel down. And number one, if you don't actually drive a car, you have to get a bus or a train to Corain. The Corain Courthouse is on the Mount Sandal Road, which is not in the city in the city centre. It's out in the it's out in the, the, the suburbs of Corain. So if you're getting a train or a bus down, how do you get out of the courthouse then? Yeah? Either take the another bus or get a taxi. So the expense in that there for a six weeks uh, trial um, on an ordinary member of the public is going to be substantial. Um, so whenever you look at it in the whole, and again, the arguments put forward is we are the second city. So therefore, during this situation where we have a pandemic and the mitigation says that the court four, which is the Crown Court of the State, can't be used, there has to be another mechanism where we can find another building or find some other area in within our city and district to house jury trials. It happens around the world, it happens uh, across the border in various venues, and uh, these things do happen. So uh, on that basis, I would be fully in support of Councillor Kiara's motion, and it's only appropriate that this council should speak to the, the Department of Justice and the court service to try and get something uh, in place um, sooner or later. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor Mooney. Alderman Devaney. The Deputy Mayor, uh, on behalf of our party, we have no problem uh, in supporting the motion now as it sits. Uh, and as everyone has stated quite rightly there, London area is the, the second city uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, we believe the court system and the judicial system should be um, sitting back uh, in the city. Uh, and, you know, as previously mentioned by the previous speakers, uh, the concern for all those involved in the the court system getting there and getting back uh, is creating a problem when they have to go to Korean and the increased cost and the inconvenience. But Chair, no problem in supporting the, the motion as it stands now. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Chair. Chair, the, 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 the Justice Minister, Minister has made commitments to bring the food services back to Bishop Street. And it, it was unfortunate that what what's happened is basically down to COVID, uh, you know, and we will have to abstain on this motion, unfortunately. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor McKinney. Um, there's no further indicated speakers. So I'm going to pass over to Councillor Kiar to sum up. Thanks, thanks, Deputy Mayor, and could just thank everybody that spoke uh, on this motion. Just a wee reminder, uh, 14, 15 years ago, we had a pathology service here in Derry. Uh, it was moved out to upgrade. The place, Alton Galvin was upgraded. There never was a post-mortem held on it. That service was taken away from the city. Now it's all Belfast centralised. The coroner services, shortly after, was removed to Belfast. Again, this has remained in Belfast. And as Councillor O'Neill mentioned, our electoral office taken out. So just if the if if the department is allowed to strip some of the services from our courthouse and bishop seat, it will may never come back again. And I would urge people to uh, support this motion. Thanks a million, Deputy Mayor. Okay. Um um, picking up from Councillor McKinney and Councillor Ferguson that they were abstaining. Anybody else that's voting on 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 this motion? Is there is there anybody else that's not supporting the motion? So. Um, with the exception of the two, the, the two abstentions, um, that that motion is is unanimous, so it's um, it's been passed. Members, the next motion um, is in the name of myself. Um, now, I, I I submitted this motion um, prior to being made aware that I, I was I would have been asked to, to chair the meeting. 
So um, I've been rest assured by the city solicitor that um, he would he'll he'll ensure that I don't stray beyond any boundaries and don't, don't overstep the mark. Um, so members, um, I'm going to take the motion as read um, and ask for a seconder. I second the motion, Chair. Councillor Heaney. Thank you. Um, can we get the motion up on the screen? Thank you, and just 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 to reassure Councillor Boy, um, Philip has has very close eye on the clock. Um, but members, um, this motion is is self-explanatory in many ways. Um, but man, there's many countries right across the world that are exploring the uh, and addition of four-day working week. Um, Countries such as Japan and New Zealand, Sweden and Spain, and closer to home in Scotland and in the 26 counties, uh, are that there's um, that there's a trial planned um, in the early in the new year, and a similar trial has been carried out in Iceland, and it's been described as as a resounding success. And that's not surprising. It's not surprising when you look at the vast waves of research that's been that's been carried out on the benefits of a four-day working week. Um, the, the the benefits highlight the fact that um, productivity is boosted, employees' health and well-being is is drastically increased, and there is um, there, there, there's a major improvements to the job satisfaction. And when when we look at this, um, we look at it in the context of 100 years ago, 70, 70 working hours, uh, a 70 working hour week was the norm, and weekends didn't exist. And I know that's something the trade unions had campaigned and worked hard for. And today we hear trade unions advocate on behalf of of workers who. Who are having difficulties in terms of achieving a work-life balance? There's workers that are claiming that they're overworked and that they feel undervalued. And we we need to we we, we can all acknowledge how the pandemic over uh, the pandemic over the last um, two years has almost overnight changed the the working environment for. For ever, most of us, um, and we believe that there's an opportunity in front of us. Um, there's an opportunity for us to, to look at changing the working patterns. And so, as we emerge from the pandemic, um, we've, we 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 can um, seize that opportunity and, and try and support workers, create better environments for workers. And I just just very briefly, when you look at the research, the research and, and, and just in terms of Britain alone, um, it, the research has found that a four day working week would bring about the same reduction in carbon emissions as removing 1.3 million cars off the road. Now, if, if when we're calling for a climate emergency, those types of changes. Um, Tangible changes um, are are matters that that we we shouldn't we, we shouldn't ignore um, and we should be um, seizing and and working towards any opportunities to make impacts um, on our inner carbon footprint such as that and, and just finally um, when we when we look at the challenges in our workforce. Um, we, we we look at the fact that over 25% of absences um, is down to work-related stress. 
if we are able to create a better environment for workers right across the board, um, and particularly in the public sector, where that 25 percent is sadly um, much higher, then um, there's 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 a possibility that that we can we can create more a more positive environment for people to be working in um, and try and try and address that issue head on by um, by by creating a, a much better work life balance for all the workers um, right across our our council areas and and right across the north. So what what we're asking is for for council and the Department of, of Economy to establish a working group and they explore the benefits that these changes, these positive changes might bring to workers. Um, I hope I haven't overstepped the mark, um, uh, but I'm sure Councillor Boyle will, will, will remind me if I have. Um, right, now forgive me because I need to check now where. Uh, the first indicated speaker um, is Councillor Mooney, I believe. Yes, Chair, it is. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not going to prolong this uh, debate any longer. Uh, I can say that the material that you have already read, I've read myself, and uh, I suppose the most important part of this motion is the last paragraph, which calls on the Council and Department of Economy to establish working groups and programmes to support this concept. Um, the evidence that I've seen shows that obviously since the pandemic, a lot of employees are working longer in hours probably find it more difficult to switch off laptops and at normal end of working hours. And this has this has led to complications as in the feelings of stress and and burnout and uh, probably eventual lack of productivity for workers and employers. But uh, the evidence that, that I've seen shows that on the on the new on the study from New Zealand, there would appear to be a twenty percent rise in productivity and work life balance. The cost is also, is also an, an environmental cost, the reduction in commuting and on carbon emissions. Um, it appears to be that you have happier employees and fewer work absences, with employees being able to spend more time on their personal life. And obviously, with that, um, it allows employers to retain better recruitment practices and retention for um, employers and employees. The most notable aspect to you is obviously that uh, national governments have decided to trial such things as like uh, this sort of concept like Japan, New Zealand, and more notably Spain. But obviously the downside, there's, as there always is, there's, this probably can only maybe avail to certain sectors of the economy. Um, I'm just thinking maybe emergency services might not be able to come out to a 40 week due to the, the nature of their work. But um, with that said, Chair, um, or sorry, Deputy Chair, uh, we would certainly support this motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman McCready. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, welcome your motion. It's innovative, uh, think it differently, and gives us something to to, to look at in more detail. Uh, the point in which it's looking at you know, forming working groups to dig deeper into the research and put the uh, the, the contextual stuff that is specific, specific to our region and country, um, you know, and look at the outputs from that. So, you know, I, with no problem supporting the motion um, to look at, you know, what, what the outputs of those working groups will be and the pilot and trial schemes to see if it does work for us. And I, I do, to a large extent, agree with uh, Member uh, Sean Mooney. Uh, he highlighted a couple of you know, very pertinent points. You know, when you look at the, some of the studies and the comparison, and you dig into the type of sector, the type of job, um, you know, and even them to the extent when you look at the employer, uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know, how much capital they have to pay their workforce, and and you know, a four day week, uh, or is a term that they say ten percent time. So Google used to run ten uh, percent time in work, so you could use pretty much all the the resources within that ten percent time, but do it on your own project or innovate, you know, create. Um, and you know, by having that type of of environment, would would breed breed innovation, and so on. But it is applicable to certain uh, types of, of employment or sectors in a way. Um, my fear, in general, so no matter where you, you try and apply this, is 
70 percent of the jobs that we have in Northern Ireland are generally linked to the civil service or to the government or those type of, of functional uh, statutory agencies and, and those have huge le legislative um, statutes assigned to them you know so be, it'd be interesting to see how we work through those so that's not seen as like a two-tier system where well if you work for a private company you get to do a, a three-day week and uh, you know and, and then get paid for a five-day week uh, but then if you work for the civil service or anybody else like that then there may not be as much latitude so it'd be interesting to see how, how that goes and very keen to be part of said working group for the, the council level uh, specifically and uh, there was one more point here but i'm going to leave it at that and just thanks very much for bringing the motion forward and you have our support thanks thank you um alderman ramsey thank you uh thank you deputy mayor yeah um this is nothing new um it is uh being piloted throughout the world and there are many companies who will benefit from this. There are many companies who uh, it will basically be impossible. Really, whenever you look down, uh, dig into it, it's eight hours a week less for people to work. Um, and, you know, most people employed would welcome um, that situation. Um, and the DUP support any anything that's going to help both business and employees. We all know. The issues we have with anxiety, with stress, and depression, um, all those issues that come with um, too many hours working. Um, and I know for a fact in uh, the sector I'm in, in the heating sector, um, I don't think there's any plumbers or, or engineers out there that, that would have an issue with eight hours um, less a week, um, uh, more family time, um, just more turn off time. Um, so we have uh, we support this motion and we look forward to the outcomes um, and we hope that we can find um, a level playing field. Um, it was alluded to that you know we could have issues where you know um, people maybe would feel disadvantaged in, in certain sectors. But um, yeah, uh, we support the motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Ramsey, Councillor Harga. Apologies, Chair. Um, thank you for letting me in there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, look, a four day work week is very, very popular right now. Um, and uh, as are many, many changes that are bubbling up from the bottom of society from workers, um, uh, the four day work week uh, has been, uh, you know, passed at the Belfast City Council and people are excited about that. And I think if our council agrees to this motion tonight as well, uh, I think that that'll be. Uh, exciting for people. I, I, I think it's one of many proposals that are that is gaining popularity uh, because we because people are under so much pressure in so many different ways that we need to reorganize work. We're going to have to reorganize the economy and we're going to have to reorganize society. And we're really going to have to challenge the fact that we have a tiny minority of multi, uh, you know, millionaires and billionaires that are basically sitting on people's lives, um, uh, making massive profits uh, while people uh, are stressed out, overworked, and undervalued. So we welcome the motion, uh, and we'll be supporting it. Uh, we are going to bring forward a uh, amendment uh, that we believe will augment the uh, proposal, uh, and I'll just put it in the chat box now. And um, it, uh, let me see. Yeah, there we go. It might, uh, it might look. Uh, Yeah, there it is. Um, it might look familiar. And as you said, trade unions won the weekend. And I think now we're fighting for a three day weekend. And I think the trade unions have to be involved in this process because they have to be able, because there's different ways a four day week can work. You can pile a lot more work into four days. You can have a 10 hour day instead of an eight hour day. Um, so trade unions have to be part of this. And I also think that our council um, should uh, work towards having a pilot program itself that we can monitor as a council, uh, exactly the same as the one that uh, has been very popular out of the Belfast City Council. So I hope you will accept those uh, that amendment to, to the motion 
Uh, I think it strengthens it, uh, and I think it makes it. Um, I think it's very important that we include uh, and 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 make sure the trade unions and workers' voices are involved in uh, the shaping uh, of a three-day weekend or a four-day work week, whatever way you want to put it. Thank you. Okay. Um, just just while the the amendment's been put up on the screen. Um, I do you see that it's it, it's very very um, familiar. Um, it's almost identical to the motion that was passed at Belfast Council. It was um, that was submitted by a party colleague, uh, Matt Jarrett. Um, the, and the, the amendment's been seconded, um, so I, I've obviously I have absolutely no um, problem with the amendment being being submitted as part of the. It's been tabled today. It's been seconded, so it's been it's opened up on the, on the floor now for debate. Is there anybody wishes to speak to the amendment? Um, Council Harkin, I know you you made comment that you as your comment. Contribution to the amendment um, finished. Yep. Councilor, you know, if you give me more time, I'm always happy to take it. But uh, oh, I think I got my point out there. Thank yep. you. Councilor Doyle, on ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and I'm happy to second this uh, amendment because I think that, in terms of the overall. Um, environment that we're trying to create in this city and district to be um, positive for workers, um, but also to try and, and uh, address a lot of the um, outworkings of um, things like unemployment and all the rest. I think that this um, fits in nicely to some of the, the projects that are undergoing around um, poverty. I also think uh, that it's very timely given the work that's going on in the UBI labs that we discussed at I think last full council. Um, so I do you think that uh, this is all about building an environment uh, for workers uh, into very keen to to bring forward as many and support as many of these motions as, as possible. I'm more than happy to do so uh, tonight. Thank you. Thanks for Mooney. Just here, just to come on and the, uh, just to uh, say that uh, we would be agreeing with the amendment. Um, I think it's a welcome addition to your own motion and it strengthens it in the ways that everybody has pointed out. So um, we'll be supporting this. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, for allowing me in. And, and, and Deputy Mayor, I uh, don't have a one point pouring cold water on it, but uh, as I say, I. Whatever, whatever is decided is, is is grand, but I'll not work in the private sector. I mean, you, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of wee small businesses, and the vast majority of businesses. I'm thinking right throughout my own DEA and right across the, the city and district. You know, it's it's small businesses with less than ten employees, and and uh, or a lot of self-employed individuals there, and it's very difficult for them to try to cut out. That extra day when the work's there, it has to be done. Yeah, you know, I mean, I I'm sitting here now, you know, I'm listening to the meeting surely, but I have paperwork that needs to be submitted before midnight, so I'm still fitting away at that as well. And you you know, there's a pile of other ones that are stuff. I mean, I had a constituent the last day there, and and I would imagine I I see where it's coming from, and I see that there. If we can get the right work life balance, it is, and it's a that's a thing that I personally would find that. that it takes a while to try to get on to that whenever you take on the council role because you're trying to, you know, you had a work life balance between before you ever went into council, and, and the majority of us still continue to keep on or, or roll whatever it was prior to that. And, and so it does take time to get it worked on. And I, and I know what you're trying to, what it's trying to do here, but I mean, I, I can sit in there 
trying to contact a local self-employed uh, individuals there, trying to get through to a government department to do with um, importing a vehicle in, out of England and it needed an MOT and because it was an English vehicle it was the difficulty, it couldn't be booked online and sat for four days trying to get through to call centres. And oh, you, you, you know, care, there's all, can we keep yeah. the I'll keep it to the point that, you, you know, so no, as I say, I see where you're going from, but it's, it's, it's grand for the larger firms and maybe civil service, but it is going to be very, very difficult to bring this in for the private sector, uh, particularly small businesses. Thank you. David Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Um, Alderman McCready. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. I accept the amendment. You know, there's there's no reason why not trade unions be involved, they're a critical stakeholder like everybody else in business and in the workplace, so no issues. Yeah, I do take uh, uh, Member Kerrigan's point on board. You know, it's, and I'm sure this will be dealt with when we look at the, the analytics of it all, the, the outputs and, and the overall assessment of, of where this can be applicable to and hopefully equitable amongst workers, but as highlighted with the difference between a private firm or an entity organization and that of a, a department or a council or something linked to the government, two very different beasts. And you, know, there's always that risk if, if you scare off the likes of, of investments or large companies, and it really does affect the employees as well. So it, we need to strike a really neat balance on this and a lot of work is to be done. And to to stipulate a 12 month plan, yeah, I think it's a bit ambitious, but hey, you know, I'm not going to disagree on an, an arbitrary line in the sand in terms of time. It's something to work towards. But ultimately, let's look at the the pilot schemes and that data to, to get us to a point where we can uh, get something back so we can make decisions on whether we, we like it, a hybrid or, or not. You know, it's it's open to the floor, you know, in the future. And the last thing I'll say specific to our council, which has an effect on, on my rate payers in particular, is it's easy for us to set a policy. Once we agree, you get that 21 members and it goes through, but it's the executive team that manage our employees. You know, they're responsible for, for, for that. And I don't want to do anything too early to put our employees in a, you know, a position which we have inadvertently put them into, where we end up having issues with, with management and delivery of outputs because, you know, we've got statutory obligations ourselves, you know, although we work, you know, independent from governments, but equally if we start using our sales, which, you know, critical births, deaths, marriages, you know, uh, leisure, refuge, all that type of stuff. You don't want to do anything too drastic too early because I don't want people not getting their bins emptied uh, on a day that they uh, wanted their bins emptied, you know, and so on. So uh, let's just bear that one in mind, please, when we when we go forward. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you, Alderman McCready. If there's no further speakers on the amendment. I'll, I'll make a very brief comment and and just in relation to the amendment, I know I had, I had referenced a motion that was put forward to Belfast um, City Council by our party colleague, Matt Jarrett, and it's great to see um, that, that Councillor Harkin is, is paying close attention to the work of, of our colleagues right across the north. Um, but it's, and, and it is only right that we acknowledge the role of trade unions because the the role the, the role of trade unions um, was critical in terms of um, winning and securing the the right to a weekend, um, which is contained within the motion and it's completely accurate. But the, this movement is around the four day week. It, it is a worldwide movement and it is being led by the trade unions. So uh, it is, I suppose, it's right and fitting that the trade unions are um, a core element to the wording of the motion. The, uh, so I believe, and we believe that um, that this strengthens the motion. So uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm here as chair, but uh, I'm speaking on behalf of, of of the party that I'm involved in. Um, so a part of so. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Sean Fain and saying that we do, we will support the, the amendment that's put in front of us today. Um, as there, there's no further speakers, and I'm, I'm going to move towards a vote on the amendment.
and I'm not hearing any negative voices towards the, the, the amendment. So can I, can I assume that the amendment is unanimous? Or is there anybody wishes to abstain or vote against? I'm going to take that as unanimous, members. So the amendment passes. Um, and now it becomes a substantive motion. Is there any further comments on the substantive motion? No. Um, I'll briefly sum up, um, and I just want to thank everybody for the comments in respect to um, the, the original motion and for Councillor Harkin for the amendment, which does um, add and um, add to the motion and strengthens the motion. Um, now, just just to pick up on some of the comments that was made, um, and, and I, I can understand why there 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 may be concerns coming from from various sectors. Um, particularly within healthcare, within education, um, but we have to and, and we, we we have to understand that there there will need to be careful planning around healthcare and education. But we have to understand that this this has been rolled out. It's been trialed, been trialed in um, in places like New Zealand, as I've said, in Iceland. In Iceland, it's came back and it was over eighty five percent. That the tech, that eighty five percent of companies and organisations that took up the the, the four day working week, and that was that was alongside um, being able to maintain an education system and a healthcare system. Um, but uh, we and bearing in mind that there is um, that that there's other pressures as well, at which um, I, I believe that it was Alderman McCready alluded to. The, the high percentage of public sector workers um, that exist here in the north. What we have to acknowledge is that um, within the public service and uh, with the sub public sector, particularly in the civil service, there is uh, a very high absentee rate, and there is um, that there, there, we're hearing from unions um, quite often around the levels of work-related stress. And the levels of sickness, some people have been off um, duty work related stress. There is the potential here for a solution. They give, they, they, they create a healthier workforce, um, they, a happier workforce, and a more productive workforce. And, and I suppose the productive workforce is picking up on, on Alderman Kerrigan's point around the small businesses um, because it, it, it it might it might it might seem necessary. It might seem logical, but um, but you no, know, sitting doing paperwork um for for as for a business um late into the night, might not um, necessarily be the best use of your time. Be the best um productive use for an employee's time. And we we we've seen from the research right across the world is when when. Um, employees, the workforce has the opportunity to rest and have a better work-life balance. Um, it it does re, um, re result in an increased or increase in pro productivity, and people become more efficient and actually get more done in less time. Now, um, one of the things that I would just like to point out in terms of um, elected representatives, I, I don't believe. That we would fall within that category, and, and unfortunately, I think um, the the long nights um, representing constituents um, isn't going to end for us anytime soon. Um, but that's that's something that comes with the privilege of of being given a mandate by the public. Um, but but in terms of the working group, I look forward to. Um, the working group and and the discussion that will take place within that, and and hopefully see this progress right across the the the, the north and right across the island. So um, 
going to leave it there. Um, and again, just ask, is there anybody in opposition to the, the motion, the substantive motion? Or can I take that as unanimous? That's unanimous, members. That motion has passed. Members, it's now half past 11. Um, and we're not going to conclude the business of tonight's meeting. And I'm conscious that um, we're sitting here in the guild hall. There's council um, employees who are entitled to um, uh, some uh, resemblance of a work life balance. Um, so I'm going to allow them, I'm going to adjourn this meeting at this point and allow them, the, the staff from the guild hall to get home. And we are going to, uh, I believe that um, officers are going to liaise with member services and try and, do, try and, try and find a time and a date that's going to suit um, members' calendars within the next few days, I believe, or the next week. But I'll, I'll bring I'll bring the chief executive in and maybe complete provide a bit more clarity on that. Uh, Deputy Mayor, um, haven't had uh, time to consult fully with other officers yet and scan diaries, um, but it's looking quite challenging in the next couple of weeks to get another evening that is free of a committee. Um, the possible exception might be Monday coming. Um, and so, members, if we um, look at this first thing tomorrow morning, um, we may get notification out to you straight away in relation to Monday coming. That's Monday the 4th of October. Um, we'll let you know um, as soon as we possibly can tomorrow morning. Thank you. Okay, members. Um, so, uh, Deputy Mayor, just to remind John, I think there may be a, an ENR meeting reference to Boom Hall in the afternoon. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor. We're aware of that. Um, we we may um, be able to um, reschedule that particular meeting. Okay. So, members, um, all that's left for me to do is wish you all good night and. Well, We'll reconvene as soon as possible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Cheers, Chair. Deputy Mayor. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. You've done a good enough job.